It's only 38 days from the November 8th, 2016 election. It's already Friday, the final day of September broadcast that we have left. It is September 30th, 2016. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We're going to be here for the next four hours. We have former prosecutor, lawyer, broadcaster, Lionel, from Lionel Media joining us uh, to break down the debate, his analysis of it. We're also going to be taking your phone calls today. I'm looking at DrudgeReport.com right now. Hillary Clinton in a new LA Times poll. And I've looked at the methodology of this poll. It is uh, basically leaning slightly towards Hillary, uh, but is fairer. And that's why consistently Donald Trump, the last, what, four months, has always even when he was the presumptive nominee uh, in the month or so before the RNC in Cleveland, he was five, six, seven points ahead of her. Generally, he's been about three, four points ahead. And right now, he is almost six points ahead. It's almost six points. Uh, Clinton in September down five points. Dead people are registered to vote in Virginia. You can, of course, guess what party they're with. They got D's in front of them. And we've got a breakdown of the electoral map. We've got a lot of this news also on Infowars.com. But Drudge, is it so easy to find with that elegant, simple layout? And I'm tempted to copy, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, but uh, battle for the White House. I kind of did with the Jones report, but we never really updated it, right? The point is, plus, you got to be up 24 hours a day to be able to update it the way Drudge does. Uh, I'm certainly glad Drudge is there, aren't you? Infowars.com is loaded with important news as well. Trump has come out and said what we said that night and what we said the next day, that the, uh, the debate was rigged. And it was rigged. When you get asked 40-plus questions and interrupted, and, and Lester Holtz is there and goes, no, you did not say that you were against the Iraq war. And Trump's like, yes, I did. Said it three times. No, you didn't. And I'm just sitting there watching that. We have the videos. Once in writing, then in a book, and then three times on video. So when I say three times, we have three times. And I've got a limited staff, a limited crew of, of uh, you know, video editors and people to go and dig all this stuff up. That's why I, I go out and dig some of them uh, up myself. But we need to take the three video clips of him in 2003. And then there's several more in 2004 and then even more in 2005. So how the media spins all this and fact checks him is they build a straw man and they go out and they find where he was against the war, you know, in 2006 and go, no, Trump, you were against it later. And then they show people a clip of him in 2006 lying by omission. There it is. 2003 clip backs up Trump on Iraq war opposition. And he says very politely, I'm not Bush's enemy, but I really think this isn't a good idea. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this. And then he goes on to say, I don't think we should be doing it. I don't think we should be doing it. We should we should. You know, get other countries uh, who also support this. You know, we need to do more intelligence. We need to look at the facts on this. And so they just have Hillary get up on TV and say, no, you didn't. And it's all a big con game. The latest hoax, the videos up on Infowars.com, is a woman has come out, a reporter, and says that months and months and months ago, she's only bringing this up now, and she's crowded with all these reporters bumping into each other. It's a feeding frenzy fighting to get to Trump. And the woman doesn't look like a reporter, but she's, you know, she's sitting there with a the camera in his face. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He goes, okay, I'll, you're a reporter. I'll, I'll answer your question. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't been a celebrity, and I'm certainly not a celebrity like Donald Trump, and I'm not trying to brag I'm a celebrity, but you've seen live footage, feeds, and it's been on the national news. When I go out to a political event, I mean, it's like crowds almost falling over me. It's very, very scary. In fact, when I was covering Bilderberg, and there was a crowd of almost 4,000 people outside the hotel, and they were fans, it was people like falling over like a rock concert, and I had to get out of there. I mean, th this could be dangerous. The conservative website that's called The Drudge Report uh, pulled out all the stops today. I had a Supreme Court justice tell me to my face, it's over for me. Said, Matt, it's over for you. They've got the votes now to enforce copyright law. You're out of there. They're going to make it so headlines you can't even use headlines. This is the savage nation we are having uh, difficulties with today's program. I read you some of the side effects of Levodopa, and then I was cut off the air. 
and the side effects are very serious. They match one of the candidates. Wait until these copyright laws work their way up and the Supreme Court decides you cannot have a website with news headlines linking across the board. Hillary Clinton with the NSA, good luck if you dissent. Good luck. Some people love him, some people hate him, and the White House may fear him because they can't control him. I've been saying they could put Hillary Clinton's brain in a jar in the Oval Office and she'd be elected. Anybody who is 70 years old who's hypothyroid, you do not elect president, ladies and gentlemen. You don't do it. Today, the leading conservative website's headline was this. Civil War, Senate to go for handguns. I challenge Hillary, take away your Secret Service. Take it away now. Take away your Secret Service, dismiss them. Have no security around you. Have no guns around you, Hillary. I dare you. I dare you. Obama, same thing. Drop your guns, Obama. Take your Secret Service away, Obama. Take it all away. Leave the White House unguarded, Obama. Let everybody know there's no guns on the White House grounds, Obama. You know what would happen in 30 seconds? Both of those people would no longer be on planet Earth. So they're asking us to drop our guns and to drop our security measures. And then the White House shot back and said, you know, made some cheap shot about, oh, he used to be relevant. Are you kidding me? Matt Drudge used to be relevant. Let me give you the numbers. In one month, you go on the website, 800, almost 810 million unique views on the Drudge Report. You're an American standing up, tough, facing these headwinds. Wow, are they blowing. And this is the reason why I came to see you, Alex, is you are one of the very few who are operating under this, this, under this theory to be an independent American in a, as, in a big way. If your calling's media, if your calling is media, fine. If your calling is sports, whatever it is, you've got to be the greatest you can be now, now. Free speech is the dread of tyrants. Live from the Infowars.com studios, it's The Alex Jones Show. Because there is a war on for your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, we uh, put together that little video out of the 45-minute uh, interview we had with Drudge last year because that's really a powerful interview. And we're making a few more of those intros because so much of what he said a year ago is really pertinent. Can you imagine having Matt Drudge back on the radio? I mean, just how riveting the things he talked about were. It's just amazing, and, and, and we need Matt Drudge, and I've not been emailing him or trying to call him, but I, I think I am. Like, make me do this today, Buckley, because I'm pretty bad about not bugging people either. I need to go ahead and um, reach out and try to get him on the show because I understand things are compacted. I understand that you know things are accelerating, and so if Drudge usually does an interview every three, four years, and he gave me one of those, probably one of the most coveted interviews there is out there, I just hope he gives somebody the interview because he needs to talk about what's going on and i've heard a few of the other inter interviews he's done a few years before he did mine and they weren't as powerful and they weren't as big so that's what i'm saying is that i am going to ask drudge for another interview all right um i've just as usual got giant stacks of news and a ton of incredible things to cover and i'm back in that position where i did a lot of preparation this morning Hours of preparation last night, hours of preparation this morning, and then I just get in here and I'm so upset by the time I get on air, I can hardly do the show. And then my intellectual acumen, like 80% of it's gone because I'm just angry at Hillary Clinton. I was talking to Roger Stone earlier and I started cussing, talking about Hillary Clinton. And I'm just like, how have I let myself get in this position? I, I, I'm trying to control myself right now, okay? And it's really hard to watch 30, 40 video clips of unbelievable, outrageous lies by the Democrats and the media and then have all this news here in front of me and then know that Donald Trump isn't going to win by 90%. I mean, you should have 100% of the public voting right now. This, this election is so critical, so obvious that the power structure is in panic mode. They're throwing everything they've got at Trump. And that means the American people. And this is a referendum on populism. 
And I think what set me over the edge this morning, because I got up at like 6 a.m. and saw the clip from, I guess, last night. And then I was working out this morning and, and with Fox News on, and, and they played it like five times. <sighs> Just get the clip ready. And, and there's this arch criminal that is destroying our country, that has committed so many crimes. I get chills thinking about it. And Hillary is on her airplane saying that he's bad because he had a research company look at business opportunities in Cuba. Now, I happen to know a lot about Cuba. I've studied it. It's in the news a lot. And I've actually been approached by people about startups in Cuba. That's usually where you can end up making the really big money. And there is a gold rush going into Cuba as it's been opened up by the Democratic Party and by Hillary Clinton's State Department and by Barack Obama. And so you can fly there now with just doing a little bit of red tape. You can now, if you go with business consortiums, get into Cuba. Microsoft, Google, Facebook, the big telecoms, the, the big insurance companies, the infrastructure companies. The hotel companies, the casino companies, they're all moving in there right now. Trump is in the hotel business, so he hires a management company that investigates business opportunities, which is completely normal for someone that builds hotels worldwide. And, and, and Cuba used to be like, you know, Miami and 10 or 15 other giant resort towns rolled into one. I mean, it was roaring. It was rocking. It was awesome. Talking to the folks that were older that used to go to Cuba. And that is completely normal for a business person. And it's not illegal. And it's this big national story with the press, even Fox with straight faces going, this could be pretty serious. Wow, breaking an embargo rule. That's like a felony, yeah. And then you go look at what Trump did. He hired a international management company to go in and do a prospectus on how do you invest, can you invest, should you invest, is it trustworthy? Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is the one that opened it up. As much as Barack Hussein Obama, whether you believe that's a good thing or not, She's giving missile secrets when she's co-president to the communist Chinese. She's selling out our technology, our military technology across the board, not just ICBM systems, entire systems. Guidance, liftoff, boost, reentry, MERV, warhead, miniaturization, you name it, they got it. Anything you want, baby, you got it. Anything at all, baby, you got it. Roy Orbison. Anything you need, anything you want, you got it, you got it, you got it. And then just the Russians and uh, the Saudi Arabia and the corruption and funding all the criminal groups and bringing the refugees into Europe and the United States and on and on and on. And the lying and the, and the immunity that the FBI basically is issuing pardons now. He's calling it rigged. He, you know, he's saying that, uh, you know, these are the, uh, you know, FBI five or whatever. Trump's not using the right term. This is a FBI pardon, and the FBI shouldn't be able to issue pardons with this so-called immunity to then make it safe for Hillary not get in trouble because all the witnesses that got caught red-handed lying to Congress and should all be going to jail, how do you get them out of that? You give them immunity supposedly under racketeering laws to get the kingpin, but then the FBI and the Justice Department are working for the very kingpin that they just gave immunity to. See, up the chain from the people under Hillary is Comey and is Loretta Lynch and all these criminals, and they're criminals. I'm just going to say it. What the FBI director did is criminal. It was this big PR campaign that he was this good guy and he was going to actually go after him and all the rest of it. And I said, okay, I, I hope so. But let me tell you something. This is criminal. And if they get away with this, the sky's the limit. And you notice now they don't care. They're just committing crimes out in the open everywhere. And then Hillary, I'm going to skip this break, has the eggs to go on television and say that, oh, Donald Trump, 
not just he's corrupt, not just he's bad, but that, see, he doesn't care about American interest. He puts his interest above America when this is exactly what she's done worse than anyone in U.S. history, literally. I can't think of anyone who sold us out as bad, as long, and on so many fronts as Hillary Clinton. But it gets richer. The reason it was so rich is I watched this 20-second clip, and all this data hits me. Everything she's done, the hypocrisy, the fraud. And then it gets worse in my mind in a split second. That's why I get a headache. Because I instantly start thinking, and my gosh, she's the one that opened up trade with Cuba. And now she's saying he's bad for going to do trade against America when she's the one that opened up the trade. And now she's saying it's bad to trade with Cuba. It's un-American when she's the mothership of it. And Trump didn't even invest there. He looked at investing. I don't go around doing investment stuff. I don't go around meeting with people. But somebody you know, rich enough, famous enough wants to meet with me and thinks they've got an idea for bringing stuff into Cuba. <laughs> I'm like, they're not going to let me be, be in the media in, in Cuba. You don't really think they're going to open up the telecoms and everything and actually let us in there. That's why they're bringing Microsoft and Google and everybody in to block and censor. They're bringing that in here, too. See, America can't have a free open Internet and then the rest of the world not have it. You understand? They have to get rid of it for us, folks. We can't be rich and have cars and air conditioning and then tell the Africans they can't. That's what global government is, people. It's making you poor. Headline, Hillary Clinton secretly pushed Cuba deal for years. Yes, she's the one behind it. Folks, if you dig hard enough, she bragged. I remember seeing it last year when this Cuba deal went through. And the finalization this year, she bragged that she was involved in that and said it was good. And that she had been in, uh, the top negotiator behind the scenes as the Secretary of State four years ago. Uh, it's just like, she, we go get the clips where she brags that and takes credit for the TPP. And unlike Al Gore and the internet, you know, that's a lie. He didn't invent that. She is pretty much the main person that, I'll tell you, she works like the devil. Like her husband said, she works like a demon. Remember Bill said that a few weeks ago? That woman flew all over the world constantly and actually worked to undermine this country and sell us out and do all this stuff. Hillary works like a demon. <laughs> she, her hell, she does fall down all the time. I, I, I mean, uh, over the years, a few times, and not, not, was freq not frequent. <laughs> So, see, how do I do a show when one 20-second clip, I mean, I'm going to play the whole minute clip, but 20 seconds of it is the meat. When she's the author of it, what Trump did is legal, and then she lies and says he's a criminal, the media goes along with it, and then she turns it all the way around and says he doesn't care about U.S. interest because he would try to do business with Cuba. When she's the honcho, they say that Thomas Jefferson wrote about 80% of the Declaration of Independence. He'd bring it back, say, what about this, what about that? There were a bunch of different versions of it. And, and when I say she's the honcho, I mean, it's kind of like Thomas Jefferson was the honcho of the Declaration of Independence. The Cuba deal is Hillary's. It's mainstream news admits that. That would be like, again, Hitler being the head judge at the Nuremberg trial and telling Nazis that he orders to be hung because you follow the orders of Adolf Hitler. I am ordering you hung from the neck until dead. And then the media goes along with it and says, well, Hitler said that they follow the orders of Hitler and that's the Nuremberg Code and they're ordered dead. And then the media doesn't say, but it's Hitler sitting in judgment of Hitler's men. But this isn't where he did something that she authored and commanded. He just looked at it. See, see, that's why I'm telling you, I can't cover the news because one clip I can talk about for an hour because it illustrates everything. It illustrates the entire spectrum of BS. And there's more than just that. <coughs> I just, I really worry about humanity. I really worry about where we're going and what's happening. If people don't see through this, there's another video I'm going to play today that's up on Infowars.com that Margaret Howell got on Austin streets, where we actually go out and show you on South Congress, at UT, 
down by 6th Street, what trendies believe. And it is a super frightening video. Brainwashed trendies think Hillary won first debate. Trump won, but it wasn't the devastating victory he could have had. And because they ganged up so bad is the only reason I can say he really won. They overdid it. But it shows Trump is being sold on being more, quote, presidential, which means being timid, and that's not what people want. Now, he's back on the warpath again, and that's good. But well, the reason this other video we're about to play after the Hillary one is so important is that these people, a bunch of them actually say, I like her and want her to be president, and she's going to be president, so she won the debate. I mean, if Trump lost the debate, I would say Trump lost the debate. I don't put perfume on a pig. And that shows the difference of these people. They're not analytical. They're not scientific. They're delusional. They are the delusionals. They call us the deplorables. They are the delusionals. They really are in a cult because so many of them say Trump lost because I wanted him to lose. Hillary won because I wanted her to win. And you could argue, you know, the expectations were set so low that just by being able to stand there for 90 minutes, though she looked like hell, you could say she won, I guess, on that aspect. But that's not what judges the overall contest. And, and, and like I said, when you cheat and interrupt somebody 40 plus times and won't let them talk and she's giving hand signals, everybody saw through that and did say, well, Holt did really gang up. I mean, you know, a lot of liberals even said, yeah, well, Trump deserves it. But yeah, yeah, Holt did gang up. Because, see, there's no sense of fairness with these people. They're like, well, he's a piece of crap. It's like Rachel Maddow and others. I've, I've played the clips. I'm going to dig them back up. And that uh, Carlos Watson and all of them on MSNBC, like, of course the IRS is going after the Tea Party and these Christian groups. These are right-wing racists. They just dehumanize you. You're a right-wing racist. And you're a liar. There's no penalties. Alex Jones, deeply racist and hates our black president. Uh, no, I hate this bill that's now law, that's now raping this company. A lot of expansion we want to do. Eating into that is we've got to do, do the stupid Obamacare stuff. Got to do it. Because they'll just charge us more with the penalties. And you're like, well, just don't pay the IRS. They'll come shut this place down. They'll, they'll come break my legs, metaphorically. That's the country we live in. Of course it's unconstitutional. Of course it's illegal. We're an info war. We fight with information, not physically, not with bullets. It, it, it may come to that for the country down the road. <clears throat> That's what the Declaration of Independence says it may come to. But I don't want that. But you can't run a big media operation like this and, and be political on the tip of the spear and not sit there and pay the stupid income tax and have outside CPA firms and lawyers make sure it's all triple-checked because they'll come in here and they'll shut us down like they're doing everybody else, folks. The, uh, Donald Trump's been audited every year for 30-plus years. We have had the enjoyment of the feds and the enjoyment of the state and the enjoyment of socialist, globalist inspectors that have come to this office and are shaking in hatred of me and hoping I do something and I just sit there and I'm very polite and get them some coffee and whatever you need. And they're, they're always so embarrassed. Like, <laughs> I mean, I've, my lawyers say they, I don't talk about this stuff on air, but my lawyers say they have seen things done to us that they've never seen before. Some of these are top national lawyers. They say, we've seen things done to you that we've never seen before. If I told you some of the stuff, folks, it is insane. But I'm not going to sit there and feed the trolls. I'm not going to get into it. But it's Kafkaesque, okay? It is Kafkaesque. And Kafkaesque means I am accused of things, and they won't tell me what it is I'm being accused of. The feds. Two years ago, came here and accused us and accused me of things and wouldn't say what they were. They said, you know what you did, the secret thing. And you're sitting there going, uh-huh. And then they actually filed stuff on me. And it said, it's secret. And 
We don't have any evidence. But it doesn't matter. We want to move forward with this. But then, of course, it didn't move forward. I'm like, go ahead. Go ahead. Do whatever you want, you crazy people. You nuts. The whole world sees you now. I'm going to come back and play the Hillary clip and, and then the other clips. But, but it, it, it's just the magnitude of the insane asylum we live in. And look, I'm very analytical. I'm very um, logical. Then you just see me after I've done the research blowing up on air because it's, 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 it's a struggle to deal with this, to live this, to know all this. I mean, and I know you know all this as well. And as the public learns more, they're going to get in the position I'm in. Where it's just like insane. I mean, it's insane. Hillary Clinton is a murdering, sick, crazy kingpin. And she's got all these weird trendies. I've seen the videos they put out at MSNBC and Media Matters behind the scenes, hopping around, acting stupid, playing with Star Wars toys, while they engage in hardcore racketeering crime that makes the Nazis blush. I, mean, I just covered Hillary for 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes I spent on the otherworldly satire, macabre, twisted universe garbage of a mainstream media propping up Hillary with all her crimes and all her past, saying that Trump is bad because he's trying to break an embargo in Cuba and build hotels when that's not even what he did. And then she's the one that got the law changed and quarterbacked the deal. And then she says, because he doesn't care about this country, only his own interest, when that's exactly what globalism is doing to us and exactly what this woman's main crime is, is shelling out U.S. interest for money at her foundation. I mean, the Clintons were in the White House a month and they would have seven, eight, you know, communist Chinese generals out of uniform, but top current generals in private three, four, five hour meetings. And then a month later, they would basically just illegally transfer the missile secrets and other secrets and just say, we've told Laura Allen Hughes and others, we believe this is okay. We've told NASA this is okay. We put a letter out, a signing statement basically, and I'll just pardon, you know, Hillary or whatever, or myself if you try to indict us. And see, Congress wouldn't go after him because the prosecutor they put in, Ken Starr, worked for the main communist Chinese law firm. It was all staged. They went after sex and, and the cigar and all the rest of it because it was something the public would bite into. And I've talked to David Shippers, the impeachment lawyer. I mean, they've all been on. It's a fact. And it's all come out later. In fact, it was in the news a few months ago that Ken Starr was basically a Chinese agent. Mainstream news went, oh, Ken Starr is really flip-flopped. He works for the Chinese and the Democrats and all this now. That's who he always was, folks. This is a woman that allowed China, the most populous country in the world, to have ICBM technology from top to bottom, from, from launch to reentry, targeting, avionics, everything. First stage boost, second stage boost, everything. And they gave them the cruise missiles, and they gave them the jet technology, and they gave them the guidance technology. They gave them everything. The Chinese communists didn't even have copies of tow missiles until the mid-90s because the Clintons gave it to them. Those are anti-tank weapons that a two-man team has. Everything. And then she sits there and says Donald Trump is a traitor to America when he's trying to save the country, bring back the republic. And I'm not a purist on Trump because he is a nationalist, he is a patriot, and he's got the enemy scared to death of him because they know who he is. Donald Trump is super pig-headed. Donald Trump... I tell people that know him, gets tears in his eyes during the Star Spangled Banner when he's watching a football game at home, folks. He is deeply sentimental about this country. He loves it. And he loves America, folks, and that's why they hate him. Period. And he's a little authoritative. He's an old-fashioned strongman. And, and, I, and that's not what I've always wanted or called for. But, you know, God works in mysterious ways. And if a strongman comes in and kicks the New World Order's ass out of this country and arrests a bunch of these traitors, and they know... Let me tell you something, folks. The military, the Army especially, and a lot of judges and people, they're ready to start arresting people, okay? don't You want to see 
people getting arrested, you're going to see it. And that's why they have pushed everything to the most hardcore level we've ever seen. Because they know they're going to jail if Donald Trump gets in. That's why they're scared. Bare minimum, they know the New World Order is collapsing. You heard Steve Pachinik, and, and, and by the way, Steve Pachinik will talk over you. He's worse than I am. Uh, he's aggressive. He's smart. Uh, years ago, a lot of the audience didn't really like him. So a lot of the audience did. But I'm going to start having him on for longer and not interrupting him as much. But I think I'm going to give him pre-written questions so that he covers what I want to hear him get into, that he can cover other stuff he wants to. But people are now clicking that guy came on five years ago and he said globalism is going to fall in the next five, six years. And um, this country is going to go down this way and that country is going to go down that way. And you're going to see uh, Spain breaking up. You're going to see the UK pulling out. You're going to see that here. And the answer is Texas. And the answer is Georgia. And the answer is, and then we're going to rebuild this and that. And, and it's like all happening. And so I like Pachinik and know he's spot on and, and, Exposed 9-11 and the fake Bin Laden deal 14 years or 13 years before it came out and everything else. I mean, I know the guy knows what he's talking about. And you hear him make these, you know, um, huge statements, these big statements. Uh, and it's true. I mean, he was one of the key people in bringing down the Soviet Union, one of the key people in overthrowing nine countries. Uh, I mean, when I have him on, sometimes he says stuff. The FBI's at his house the next day. He's in federal court. He's got foreign countries trying to extradite him, you know, over stuff. Um, you name it. I mean, it, it's it's real. And, and that's what I'm telling you, folks, is that in hindsight, you see how accurate we've been, how accurate our key guests have been. But you also see that we've been trying to hold off this new world order while we fight it. It slows down. Now they're behind. They're getting more desperate. And people say, well, where's the world government? You said it was coming. And we're like, we're trying to hold it back. That's why. But you see what they've done. They're collapsing all these countries. And then now it's finally running over us. And people are going, whoa, it's real. They're, they're announcing the U.N. coming in to run our elections and run our police. And what in the world? My power prices just went way up. And, oh, my gosh, they now, you know, admit that they're spying on me. Yes, folks, we're not in Kansas anymore. And they've blown the drawbridge out. The, I mean, the physical gates are now blasted open. The country is falling very, very quickly. We're being maneuvered into total collapse. So is Europe. They're now collapsing the third world to then rush us with migrant waves that are 10, 15, 20 times bigger in the next decade. And the world is just going to be in a giant civil war. Ethnic war, religious war, economic war, clashes, manipulation. With the globalists in there stirring the pot and then always posing as the saviors, consolidating power globally into global organs to counter global crises they created. Planetary government. That's end game is not some Buck Rogers future, not some, you know, glistening jetpacks and space stations and life extension technology. No, 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 no. A future. That's a boot stomping on a face forever, to quote George Orwell. Okay, I want to get to these clips. Uh, briefly, we have some amazing sponsors. Solutions from Science has a sale that, because I was two, three weeks even getting to this uh, sponsor, I've just been so busy that he's extended it just for uh, our listeners. And they've got a lot of great uh, wind turbines, solar generators, uh, smart LED light bulbs, EMP bags, which is also good to just not be spied on with your electronics, available at summersolarsale.com. Summer solarcell.com or 1-877-327-0365 877-327-0365 that's summer solar sale.com and again they're gonna have to end this sale soon it's amazing and oh, here's the most important part buy one perfect power package and use coupon code alex to receive another one free so promo code alex check that out today oh and then finally i need to get a glass of water in here um we have the new probiotic biome defense that really is the best probiotic that we could come out with. There are four big companies that produce 90% of it. There's a few small boutique companies. Then everything else, you've got to have a medical license to get, even though it's not prescription. Uh, we have to get medical doctors and people just to be signatories in my company. A lot of times even get bulk shipments 
of ingredients that are saying DNA for us. I mean, Mitsubishi America doesn't even talk to you if an MD, you know, isn't isn't the one doing the contracts. Uh, even though this stuff is not prescription, it's prescription in some parts of the world. And that's just an example of DNA force is some of the things that are in it that they are trying to make prescription because they're, 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 they're so helpful and you know, the, the uh, big pharma wants to take control. But they want to make fish oil prescription. In fact, you can actually get it covered under insurance with most plans now. You can just go down to the store and buy it. I mean, that's what I'm talking about here. This is getting crazy. Uh, and then they don't want you to sell fish oil anymore. I mean, next, what, don't eat a fish? Don't eat cod? Don't eat sardines? I mean, you know, this is how they're patenting the building blocks of life and then saying you can't have them. That's why they're, they're, they're coming out with Monsanto uh, and has now gotten the license uh, for th uh, the new system that can edit genes in live time. The CRISP. CRISPR. And then that means they're going to create a new version of it and patent that and say you don't own it anymore. And if you're doubting me, people that had their blood taken in the last 40-something years, it's put in a Pentagon UN database. I actually broke this news in 1997 with a medical nurse out of the medical facility uh, in uh, San Antonio, uh, got me the info. She said, look, we, we data store the blood here. It's also sent to the UN. It's, it's stored in Europe. Uh, and they are patenting people's particular proteins and DNA in their body. And then when folks are going to go try to get DNA treatments, they're going to be told, you don't own your own DNA anymore. And we patented it. People didn't believe me until they uh, parents started to do, uh, file lawsuits in Austin and, and Minneapolis, St. Paul. And then sure enough, the lawyers all discovered it was true. Well, of course it was true. It was out of Fort Sam Houston Medical Center in San Antonio. And then they suddenly saw the headlines about a year later. Oh, a woman went in to get you know this DNA treatment, was told to be 100 plus thousand dollars for the license because the protein in her blood was bought by a company decades ago and they had it on file and are telling her that treatment is owned by them because they got the blood through a giant eugenics program. The eugenicists want the cures that are in our blood, that are in our DNA, in our mutations. That's why they're getting your blood. That's why they're storing it. They don't send your baby's blood to the health department because uh, they want to check and see for rare diseases. They can check it on the spot. In fact, they don't check for the diseases. They send your blood to the government. Now, the point I'm getting at is they're hitting us so hard that there's no way to reverse all the things they're doing to us. All you can do is mediate it, mitigate it as much as you can. And, and from our research, the number one thing is the gut and not having trace element deficiencies. And that's where biome defense comes in, ladies and gentlemen. And it is the very best we can come up with. It uses a lot of the stuff that's been developed in Europe that, again, as I was saying, is prescription. And, and, and I'm talking about the processes, how this all works. Sign up for auto ship, and you get an additional 10% off. Uh, there's also uh, free shipping on orders $50 or more. Probiotic biome defense from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Okay. I burned up most of the first hour only on a few stories. I'm going to have to really get my head down here and start moving quickly. But since I mentioned this, here's Hillary. In fact, when we post this, chop this up and post it to the web later, can we go back in and hard edit when we put it on YouTube back earlier when I talked about it so when people are watching that, they can actually see it? Hard edit. I'm going to play it now again, too. But I want to hard edit that in to just somewhere in there as people actually see what I'm talking about instead of me just talking about it 30 minutes ago and then now I'm about to talk about it again and have to recap it. The point is he's a total hypocrite. Donald Trump didn't do anything illegal. He had a company look into could he legally put hotels in? And the answer is only if you go through the Clintons, they're going to broker what companies can go in. And that's Microsoft, Google, you know, Bezos. And this is about controlled economies. And what she's really saying is nobody can build in Cuba but us. That's why we did this deal. And you're not doing what's good for America, Trump. You only do stuff for yourself. The biggest Chinese spy in this country's ever seen. Communist. She's not even a communist. Again, the Chinese communists are just a bunch of generals using their people as slaves. It's all, the terms, all of it, it's all a lie. These are horrible, piratical, evil psychopaths that enjoy hurting you while they become fabulously rich off your labor. And they prance around all day with little girls on stage with her. 
you got the Joker creature walking around, like actually fear for the children that are close to her, just the demonic energy. Uh, but uh, here she is. Today, we learned uh, about his efforts to do business in Cuba, which appear to violate uh, U.S. law, certainly flout uh, American foreign policy, and he has consistently uh, misled people in responding to questions about whether he was attempting uh, to do business in Cuba. We have laws in our country, uh, and... Uh, <laughs> The uh, efforts that Trump was making to get into the Cuban market, putting his business interests ahead of the laws of the United States and the uh, uh, requirements that businesses were operating under uh, because of the sanctions, uh, shows that he puts his personal and business interests ahead of the laws and the values and the policies of the United States of America. People have to look carefully in making their decision uh, about who to vote for because it will be either uh, him or me. And I am going to do everything I can to make sure it's me. And then she does a Joker's face. This is Twilight Zone episode. This isn't real. What was it like the head of Citibank came out and said there's like a something 50% chance or something? This is a computer simulation? I mean, is this a joke? Is this like satire for space aliens or something like they watch this and this is like entertainment i'm not saying that literally it's it's, it's again that's an allegory but i mean sometimes i wonder because trump had a company look at trying to get him into cuba and then they got all these requirements where basically the democratic party decides if you can kind of like more than 10,000 501c3s were given to democrat groups and then three were given in the last, what is it, eight years, seven and a half years, and, and counting two Republicans or conservatives or veterans groups or gun groups. So you want a charity to promote an idea? Let's say being kind to animals, animal welfare. Let's just randomly pick something or maybe starving kids or something. If, you, if they go look at who you are, and if you have any conservative or pro-American leanings, you don't get it. And you know what? You don't get into Cuba either, and you don't get into anything else. And if you're not the right race, you don't get the scholarship, or you don't get admitted. And then they use the chivalry of the West of Christianity to go, well, that is discrimination, but we discriminated, so now we've got to discriminate. No, it just turns into another evil. It doesn't work, and it creates division. But that's all the chicken feed down at the low level. With the globalist, it's just next level. It's and, and to sit here and go, we have laws, and the, and the press is all nodding. Oh yes, oh, oh, we have, we're a nation of laws, right, Hillary? You've just been caught lying, committing crimes, organized crime, espionage, on and on and on. And it's not about infidelity with Clinton, and she's the portable victim. She covers up the rapes. By the way, if you're a TV viewer watching us right now, there's a big controversy going. There is a pyramid graphic that we've been having when we come in that shows the United Nations, and there's another one that shows a world government flag that then burns and, and catches on fire. Uh, and I guess, because uh, I didn't direct this properly, I just said, hey, those graphics from uh, you know, that earlier film, I want to use those as an intro to you know, show the UN is behind world government. Well, people then think that I'm pushing world government. Let me explain. We're against world government. When we show the UN symbol and a pyramid, we're saying that's the new world order. But I can get some people thinking that we're trying to get something over on them because it doesn't show the next part where it burst into flames. It burns. So somehow in that graphic sequence, we need to get the part where it burns. <laughs> but, but why did Christ say you judge a tree by its fruits? We're against the corrupt global government. We're against Illuminati-style systems. We're against secrecy and and combines and monopolies that's what hillary and the globalists are creating okay so something can look bad but you have to look at the track record of it and not look for secret signs and things that you know i'm here giving hand signals to the new world order because i do things like this like you know put my index finger and my thumb together ever since i was a child I saw people do that hand signal. Maybe I've been, you know, been programmed by TV. We all have. So when, so when I'm making a point, I, I do that. But people have been doing that for thousands of years.
Could you say that means the Illuminati or something? Sure. But every time there's a circle, or if we have a symbol of a new future for America, and it shows a sun coming up of dawn, a new day, of course the globalists have taken that powerful symbol. They've taken every symbol. And so, well, you, the American flag has stars on it, and pentacles can be used in magic. It just symbolizes each state. So... You have to go with the spirit of something and what it stands for, not groping around looking for conspiracies that aren't there. See, the real conspiracy theorists out there are like mainstream media. They just make stuff up and see what people will buy. But there's also people online that will are, are, are like fiction writers. They just say it's real. Okay, they got big imaginations. Great. I'm covering how things really work. And look at how we've been proven right. But again, I don't deserve to have my, you know brass ring or a medal because the globalists told us what they're building. That's really my biggest frustration is that low information voters know they're being lied to, but then they just think, oh, but Trump's lying too. No, he's one of the most honest people in, in, in quote politics I've ever seen. And that's because he's super stubborn. He's not going to sit there and lie to you because he thinks he's right. The problem is he's so honest the way he puts things, they can spin it and twist it. But, you know, if the American people want to keep being bamboozled, knock yourselves out and go with Hillary. But I tell you, you've really hitched your wagon to somebody evil. The globalists are out of control. They are completely anti-human, and they're, they're coming after humanity. Now, i got a bunch of clips I want to play. Fifteen questions white people have for BuzzFeed racist. It's very powerful. Uh, I haven't gotten the Margaret House piece, which shows delusion, where almost all the Democrats she talked to go, Hillary won because I want her to win. And because she'll be the next president. Well, let's say a team's going to win the Super Bowl, okay? But if they lose a game, and most of the polls show that, well, then you say, well, I don't think she you did as good as she could have. I think Trump kind of won, but he's still a horrible guy. That would have been honest. I mean, because Trump won. But no. No. They just say, I want her to win, so I say she won. We'll be back. I'm Alex Jones. Second hour straight ahead. Friday, September 30th, 2016. Only 38 days from the most important decision the United States may have ever made. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live here, and we are going to have Lionel, uh, prosecutor, lawyer, uh, on to break down the debate. I was uh, seeing some of the comments he's been making on, on his show, and I think they're very, very pertinent, so he'll be riding shotgun with us. We're going to be opening the phones up uh, as well on this Friday edition. I think we had a good first hour, but I got just more into the surrealness of Hillary Clinton Going after Trump for looking at, at trying to build a hotel in Cuba when that's getting opened up. And then she says he didn't follow all the regulations right with no proof when she's the one that helped get the regulations taken off. And then she says he's trying to sell out America. He doesn't care about America when she's the one selling out America. That's what globalism is. That's what it's always been about. And I know I'm stuck on that. It's just... The clip is amazing. And I'm not going to play it again because, quite frankly, I can't look at her. Now, we've got so much news here that we're going to cover in this hour. Obviously, the latest poll numbers showing Trump continuing to uh, gain. They have some polls. I've looked at the methodology on uh, where it's got Hillary gaining points in Florida and other battleground states. Baloney. Uh, I went and looked at a whole bunch of polls on Florida. And Trump is holding steady at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 points ahead. Uh, the L.A. Times has a national poll of 2,251 respondents. They've been, I don't want to say accurate, but they don't put their thumb on the scale. I'll give it to them, as bad as the other people have been doing. And it's got Trump almost six points ahead, 47.3 to 41.7. Uh, so five-plus points down for her ending the month of September. You got to love this. Students walk out of veteran speech to protest his use of radical Islam. And that was U.S. Army former Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. And again, this is like when they come out and say, hey, 
When you say cold, dead hand, that means you want to overthrow the government. Or when you say give up your security, Hillary, if you want to take our guns, that means you want to hurt Hillary. They're taking just normal, factual information. And then they're calling it dirty and, and evil and bad. Again, just more of this assault on language where they now say you can't say the term mother or father. And that's on the entrance paperwork from elementary schools to colleges and now businesses, you name it, do not want you to use the term mother or father because mother or father hurts someone. Your existence, having a mother and father or being a mother or father, hurts someone. Now think about how cultic that is. And quite frankly, I've been corrected by people, and it really is true. I've, I've really thought about it. And actually, radical Islam is not f fair and is actually politically correct. But see, that's how they walk you into this prison. Only use radical Islam. Don't call Islam itself an expansionist, patriarchal, monotheistic death machine in history. Just say, you know, radical Islamists, you know, the ones that shoot up malls and shoot up gay nightclubs, and it's all come out for Islam, you know, triggered by the drone program, triggered by blah, 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 which Obama's radically expanded. And then say, how dare you say what happened in New York or what happened in Orlando or what happened in, in you know, uh, areas of New Jersey. How dare you say that's even Islamic or a bomb? This is outrageous. And then we're walking out. You said radical Islam. You said Islam suppresses women. Orthodox Islam is the proper term for it. Orthodox Islam. Dominant Islam is violent, is radical, and is the most expansionist and foaming at the mouth, rabies crazed of any religion ever seen. Uh, by the way, I, I saw some comments on the website, and, and then I noticed it this morning. People were saying, you know, you're saying it's day 39, but it's day 40. Or you're saying it's day 38, but it's day 39. And I noticed, I was watching Fox News this morning, monitoring how it's turning into the Clinton News Network more and more. I mean, it's really out of coup there. And I was watching it. I said, yeah, they say 39 days. And I went and checked. No, it's 38 days to election day. But maybe Fox is right. In, in being different, because that day, you probably won't know until it's almost midnight, maybe longer. And so it is 39 days if you count that last day that really is the election. I'm kind of on the fence about this. Should we do like a leap year or a reverse leap year and like take a day out this weekend? And then so it won't be, you see, 37, 36. It won't be thir day 35 on Monday. It'll be day 36. Should we say, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm thinking about it. Is Fox right? Is it 39 days or 38 days? Potato, patata. It's kind of like we celebrated the new millennium in 2000. 2000 was not the new millennium. It was, it was 2001. Like a 10 is not an 11. It's not the beginning of the third millennium in 2000. They said it was, so it was. And and how many angels can dance on the head of a pen? Questions like that. That was a real question the Vatican had a few, was it 600, 700 years ago. Doesn't matter unless they're artificially doing things like that just to scramble logic. But I really think Fox is right. We won't know who the new president is for 39 days or 38 and a half now. So... I think we should leap year it. I think we should pull it, look at the ma maps, look at the calendars, take a day out and go with the Fox model. And I don't usually imitate people, but I, I, I'm i obsessing over this. I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. See, that's the problem. My brain gets on one thing and then just, just continually hammers on that while all this other stuff's happening. Let me tell you what we're going to cover this hour. Hoax. Reporter claims Trump grabbed her. Video shows nothing. We have uh, Trump coming out saying the debate was rigged and that media is fabricating stories. And, and, and that's even more important. I could sit here and say inside sources or unnamed sources. Now, when we say unnamed sources in the, in, in the Secret Service told us that Hillary Clinton has to have help getting out of the vehicle, special lowering systems, and that she's falling down having epileptic seizures, that really happened.
The media said we were making it up and were liars and had fake sources. I have never had a fake source. I've talked to a lot of top journalists. They think it's ethical what I've done. I have before on really dangerous stuff switched it. If I get something from the FBI, I say I got it from the state police. If I get it from state police in California, I say it's state police in Missouri. So now you're getting a little bit of inside bait to protect people. But I've never lied about what the sources give us and what the information is. Now, this was Secret Service, and, and it was so dangerous that Biggs was like hogging in at the trough, which is great. I love reporters like that who want the big story. He wanted to go with it. And I said, okay, you talk to him. You vet it. I'm just like, this is too creepy. I'm not going to stand around with Secret Service with their I mean, older ones you know, in suits. You know, I mean, this isn't just the average Secret Service guy with a machine gun down on the corner. Uh, look, by the way, nobody's got a pay grade high enough to be doing this. N anybody tells you we're not all in over our heads is full of it. I'm in way over my head at this point, okay? Everybody is. Hillary is. Trump is. They're all trying to organize and control chaos, the globalists. We're trying to stop it. And these people are dangerous. And all I can say is... Everybody better get their ducks in a row because every indicator is we are going to hell in a handbasket right now. Okay, let me get to the news. There's also a video, the, the audio is not really for radio, of a guy in his car with his six-year-old son and the cops from far away, he's got his hands up, just kill, you know, shoot him and shoot the kid. And he's got his hands up, and this is just more cops that are just thinking they're playing a video game, and they just execute the guy who, who was doing nothing. He's a he's a white guy, though, so see, it, it, uh, it's okay they killed the six-year-old because it's a white kid. You're not going to hear anything about this unless you go to Infowars.com. Police shoot six-year-old autistic boy dead, but he's white, so no one cares. And even police unions have been honest. They say, listen... We just won't respond if it's a black area a lot and dangerous because we don't want to get blamed. But yeah, so there's more mistakes. We kill more white people, a lot more white people. And it's not because they want to get fired and get sued and lose their job. Let me tell you, 99% of cops do not want to kill people, folks. It's like wanting to get, you know, cancer. The paperwork, all of it. The lawsuits, you don't want to kill somebody when it's clear that they have to be shot. They're hiring a bunch of political correct wimps. And I mean, every time I see these videos, it is the wimpiest cop. And I'll just say it, a lot of times it's women. Why have men for all of history been in the main dominant leadership positions? Women are just as smart as men, but on average, they don't want to work 18 hours a day. I want to come up here seven days a week. I constantly am wanting to fight the new world order. I am. I, I don't have fear. I'm crazed. I can't have a baby. I don't have mammary glands. See, it's not discrimination that I'm not a woman and I can't do the incredible things that these magical creatures can do. But the point is, and there are bad cop males that do it, but statistically, female cops, you can look it up, are more likely to kill you. So am I saying women are bad? No, I'm saying statistically... A woman's never passed the Army Green Beret program, last time I checked, unless they lower the standards. Same thing with the Marines. Are there women out there that beat me up? Maybe. Are there a bunch of men that can? Absolutely. It's statistics. It's like Kenyan runners win almost all the long-distance races, like 90-something percent. The Africans can't beat them. It's the genetics. The strongest people in the world come from a couple of northern Icelandic type nations. Now, are there black guys that are one, you know, tenth of one percent less strong? Absolutely. On average, black males are the strongest people. Unless you then go sample 
Northern Europeans and uh, original Viking stock. Is that saying those Viking guys are superior because the best strong men come from there? No, it's just saying genetically that that group has that trait. So you expand this out to men and women, it just gets ridiculous from that point on. And I don't even know why I'm going off down this path. It's just you do not want cowards as police officers. And you do not also want to train cops. Your life comes first every time. And so if you actually kill somebody, that's the way it is. And some of that training is going on. No, if you're putting yourself in this position, you need to make sure that even if you get killed, you don't kill kids. That's what a real warrior does. That's what a hero does. And so you got a guy with his hands up, and you shoot him and shoot his kid, killing the kid. And it's not even in the news. And it's, again, not because they wanted to kill people. It's because the cops. And you're going to have good cops, too, shoot innocent people. There's going to be mistakes. But when somebody's got their hands up, you just cannot shoot them. All right, I've, I've just absolutely got so much to get to. I'm skipping this break, too. Let's go ahead and get into the rigging that's going on. Let's go ahead and uh, hear from Donald Trump. And, and more important than the rigging, which they try to spin, oh, you're just being, you know, a, a sourpuss. No, I mean, Lester Holt interrupted him 40-plus times. He interrupted Hillary six times. And when he did, it was softballs to Hillary. It was vicious to Trump. It was so one-sided. He debated two people. Let's skip this break. He debated two people. He debated them. That's a fact. And so if it's rigged, if you score a touchdown fair and square in the NFL, and every time you score, the ref says, no, sorry, you don't get that. you got to say, this game was rigged. We've got to investigate the refs. We've got to see if they've been paid off. I mean, it's cut and dry, people. It's not sourpuss. But that's not what's important. It's the next statement. Do not believe inside sources, what I mentioned earlier. If it's a respected person like Cy Hirsch, or it's somebody like InfoWars that has a history of breaking hardcore stuff, or, or Drudge, or others, trust but verify, then inside sources or unnamed sources is absolutely reasonable. But when it's mainstream media, they are making stuff up. They made up that Trump raped a girl that didn't exist in Houston. They're basically making up he was illegally doing trade in Cuba. They've made up all this other stuff. Look at all the stuff they've made up about him. And so absolutely, do not believe anything they say. Well, you'll say, well, then why do you, you know, believe a newscast when they say there was a flood in a certain place? Because I can check other places. And, I, and they don't lie on big basic stuff. It's politics. It's who runs things that they're lying. And they're going to bigger and bigger levels of it. So everybody has to understand, anyone in the mainstream media that's going along with all these lies, this is dangerous what you're doing. You don't seem to understand that if you go much further and if your team succeeds, can you imagine Hillary Clinton with all these spy technologies and this police state already above the law and the things they've done and saying they want to shut down the alt-right? And you're like, well, good. The alt-right are racist because you dehumanized us and said we were. And so now we deserve to just be disappeared. After all, let the IRS come after us and shut down our websites and shut us down. After all, we're racist, remember? Oh, of course we're not letting you have your tax exemptions. Of course we're coming after these groups. Of course we're coming after the Tea Party because you're racist. You're dehumanized. You don't have a right to exist. These are words they're using. You don't have a right to exist. Alt-right doesn't have a right to have a show. You don't have a right. You don't have a right. And then we have the George Soros emails from a month ago that didn't get hardly any attention where he says, we'll make our news sites and our agenda what you're able to see and block others. And we'll have the UN do it. Well, guess what? That was from three years ago, these emails. Who takes over the Internet? How, how many hours until they take over the Internet? We're a day away, folks. And, and how can we sit here and predict what they're going to say and do? Because we know them. They're going to come out and say, oh, the, the Internet transfer happened on October 1st, and it's still here. Birds are still singing. Sky's still blue, baby. Blue birds flying in the sky, la, la, la. And then they'll just start phasing the censorship in, which they're already doing. And then they'll say, where's the censorship? Where is it? And they're doing it everywhere. You experience it. 
and they just name, oh, uh, internet folks for years just trolling, having fun, saying a good joke, whatever, would put a green frog up. But because somewhere a Nazi used the green frog, Pepe, the Southern Poverty Law Center and the government have now listed as racist, so you can't see anything they want. They can just list as bad, as verboten. Let's take one of the uh, biome defense New probiotics available at InfoWarsLife.com. The very best that we could come up with. Simply amazing. We could have private labeled something easy you know, years ago. We didn't. This is the latest technology, the highest quality strains. Massive uh, concentrations. Boosted with the compounds that the flora need to survive through your stomach and then thrive in the gut. So it's, it's you know, it's got their little little survival pack with them. We're sending these troops in heavily armed with uh, with the gear. We're not just, you know, dumping dead, crappy bacteria into you. So Biome Defense, probiotic, InfoWarsLife.com. I'm taking mine right now. So essential. This glass, I just got this glass out of the sink in there. I don't think this glass was too clean. Anyways, InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com. Or call toll free 888 253 3139. And it is your support of this broadcast that makes this all possible. InfoWarsLife.com or 888 253 3139. Okay, let's go ahead and start getting the clips. Here is Trump on the rigging, and the media is fabricating stories from, quote, inside sources. We are in such a rigged system, and he goes on and tweets to say, do not believe it. There, he goes, we've confirmed. That they're just lying, and absolutely, look, look, they've had articles in the New York Times and everywhere else saying it's time to not be, you know, truthful. He's so bad, it's time to lie. You've seen them. See, they have to organize the crime publicly, get everybody involved, and say it's time to lie, everybody. Okay, he's racist. Well, let's lie. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Here it is. And then I had to put up. Then I had to put up with the anchor and fight the anchor all the time on everything I said. What a rigged deal. I'll tell you, we're in such a rigged system. Uh, it is terrible. What's going on in this country is so sad, but it will change. Remember, November 8th, November 8th. What he's got a hammer is Hillary is the icon of the past, a fossil of corruption. Decade after decade after decade after decade was kicked out of Congress as an aide for fabricating evidence. Her whole life was a fraud. She is the establishment. The establishment is against me. I am for the people. I am a populist. I am a constitutionalist. I am taking action. This is make it or break it. Now, I've got a bunch of other clips I want to get to. This, this, this one I've mentioned, but this is a big deal. You've got this lady with Trump completely mobbed with reporters. I'm going to tell you, I've been in that position, too. It's, I mean, they're bumping into you, people are grabbing, uh, you name it. Folks will punch you to try to get you to hit somebody. Uh, that's a tactic that's happened a lot. Uh, people will step on your feet, and you've got to go, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, it gets scary. In fact, there's footage of this we can find online. of uh, I think It's like Alex Jones mobbed or whatever. It was in the newspapers in England. Like three and a half plus thousand people, almost 4,000. And when I showed up to go give my speech, I mean, just... Like a thousand of the super fans ran up all over, and it was like being in the front row of a rock concert in the mosh pit, and it was like bam, 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 and just like a rugby match. It was like rugby. People were running in, pressing in, falling down. Women were like, ah, that's what's going on in these. And it's like, dun, 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 CNN, dun, 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 Fox News. One guy on Fox was more fair about it and said it was a bunch of baloney, but on other channels, it's like, man, he's really mean to women, grabbing her arm, pushing her back. I mean, this guy is something else. So let's go ahead and play a female reporter accused Donald Trump of abuse after the presidential debate at Hofstra University. And, and again, I said months ago, there's another woman also saying months ago this about Trump. The woman said Trump grabbed her wrist, but she didn't say it that night, and pushed her away. Now there's video of what really happened, and it's like nothing. You don't see anything. Here it is. So, you know, it seems like just about every day Donald Trump's facing new charges that he's acting too aggressively or too hostile. And last night, a guest on this very show 
gave an account in which she claims this happened to her, that Donald Trump actually uh, pressed on her uh, as she was trying to ask him a question. Uh, the incident in question, of course, that we're talking about here, took place in Hofstra at the debate uh, in the, in the, at the end in that so-called spin room. She gave us a video of that exchange, uh, and I want to show it to you right now, and I want your opinion. Here it is. You do your camera. Do you raise your camera? You ready? Thank you so much. All right, you saw that. Now watch and listen to what she told us last night. I asked him a very basic question about how he could garner support from more millennial women. As a millennial black woman, that is a question very important to me. Instead of answering my question, he grabbed my wrist, pushed my phone away as I was recording, and said, put that down. If he cared about getting millennial women support, this which he's only going about this. Wait a minute, Donald support. Trump touched you. He yes. grabbed your wrist. Yes. I'm holding my phone like this, recording. Asking him a question, how can you get more millennial women support from you? Because he's pulling at 8% support from millennial women, 3% African Americans. He needs our vote. He grabs my wrist, says put that down, and pushes my phone out of the way and ignores my question. That account seemed dramatically different than the video we saw. And let's face it, uh, macroaggression run wild, uh, media progressive versus Trump run wild. Uh, this is really an amazing story, particularly after the Michelle Fields scenario. So. I got to say it consistently, Charles Payne is probably, other than Judge Napolitano, the smartest, best person on Fox. I mean, that guy should not just have his own show on Fox Business, and, and, and he should have one of the biggest shows on Fox. Uh, absolutely. This is just all these millennials. I feel sorry for some of them. They're all just about being a victim. It's, it's such made-up crap. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. David Knight's hosting the fourth hour today. We're going to have Roger Stone popping in briefly towards the end of the broadcast. There's a big CNN push. It says the men that are in the boys' club with Trump, and they're the ones that are advising Trump to bring up the infidelity of Bill. No, it's not infidelity. It's raping women. That's what we're talking about. It is covering up for that. It's, it, it, it's Hillary being on the bimbo eruption uh, department because she's a woman and has that cover. That's what Hillary's been, is, is some uh, men have a fake wife to be their beard because they're really homosexuals. Uh, but with Bill Clinton, Hillary is a beard uh, in a political husband and wife team for a sex maniac, sex addict, who likes to also rape women. Now, he doesn't beat you up if you give it over. But if you resist, you are going to get bit, you're going to get slapped, you're going to get knocked upside the head. And there's only one person, according to the Secret Service and the FBI and everybody else, this is all public, that Bill's afraid of, and that's Hillary. And she hits him in the head with ashtrays, golf clubs, books, you name it. Hillary is vicious. I'm not saying she's not tough enough to be president. She is crazy. I mean, this is a big guy that rapes women. And he's scared of Hillary because Hillary has basically let him know, I will be the victim. I will bring you down. I will destroy you. Hillary Clinton's already been president for eight years. She tried to be president for the last eight. Now she wants back. Lionel is about to be our guest, former prosecutor, to get into the debates. And, and, and Hillary you know, uh, lying to the FBI and this, this FBI pardon, basically, is what I'm calling it. That's what I called it yesterday. I mean, Trump needs to call it the FBI pardon. The FBI shouldn't be allowed to pardon everyone so that they don't have to implicate Hillary and so they can't testify that Hillary uh, ordered them to do all this. I mean, this is a cut and dry cover up and Comey getting up there and saying, we're still the FBI. You always knew we were. And I'm like, yes, and worse, much worse. Yes, you're right. You, you are the same old FBI you always were and worse. And, and, and now the standards are just wide open. Just do whatever you want. As long as you're the party in power, well, then why not just stay in power? Why not just steal the election? You're going to commit a thousand other crimes. Going to do stuff even worse? I mean, let me tell you something. Stealing the election is bad. Given this, I mean, if you're going to steal the election, at least don't give the missile secrets to the Chinese. You know what I mean? Just don't have it out for the country. You people are bottomless pits of absolute evil. I want to play this Paul Watson report while we're getting Lionel squared away. This is very important because 
I see the CNN headlines, MSNBC, it's like, with Trump, it's all men. With Trump, it's all about men. It's all about, hey, girls, it's all about girls. It's all about dividing everyone. Total classism, total divide and conquer. And I know you know that, but it's just so outrageous. It's so ridiculous. I'm not going to sit there and pander to it and say, well, his wife advises him and his campaign head's a woman and blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to do that. Or, or he hired a ton of women, more than you know anybody in his industry, and puts women in most of top positions. Of course, in a political structure, he's going and talking to old you know experts. But the point is, it's not bad. But then the people that they have in these articles, Roger Stone, I talked to this morning, that isn't what anybody's advising Trump to do. That's not what they're saying. They just say, Roger Stone is advising Trump to do this, when it's the opposite. He says, no, don't say he cheated on her, she's a victim. She's the bimbo eruption cover-upper. She grabs you by the hand and threatens them and squeezes it and says, well, I'll destroy you if you bring up the rape. So we're going to go to Paul Watson's report for three minutes and then come back as we get Lionel on. He's going to ride shotgun with us for the next hour and 25 minutes or so before David Knight uh, takes over. But here is uh, the uh, breakdown from Paul Watson on BuzzFeed. Now, you may be thinking, why do I care about that? Well, it's one of the biggest websites out there. And it just shows how out of control these people are. And this this video should go viral. Here it is. BuzzFeed seems really inquisitive when it comes to asking questions of white people. Why is it so hard for you to acknowledge your privilege? Why can't most white people dance? Why do you get so annoyed when other people don't speak English? Why can't we figure out how to make our own pop culture? Why do you feel like having one black friend makes you a cultural expert or not a racist? Why do you keep talking about reverse racism? That is not a thing. Why do you think including diversity in the workplace reduces the quality of work? Why do you get offended when you see a table full of black people, but not when you see a lunchroom full of white people? Why do you think saying namaste is an appropriate way to greet me? Why do you guys think it's okay to call me an immigrant or foreigner? White racist. White racist. White racist. White racist. White racist, white racist, white racist, white racist. Racist, 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 racist. So here are 15 questions that white people have for BuzzFeed. You're a white male! Why is it racist to make generalizations about beliefs, lifestyle, or behavior based on a person's race? Unless they're white. If making generalizations about people's beliefs based on their race is racist, then why do you automatically assume that all black people are social justice warriors? Why is it racist to stereotype non-whites for positive traits, like Asians being intellectual or black people being athletic? But then it's perfectly okay to stereotype white people for negative traits, like not being able to dance. <laughs> Why are white people racist for having zero black friends, but then we're also racist for having one black friend? Because we use that black friend to validate our opinions. Do you have a black friend? Uh, yeah. Is it just one? But then we're also racist for having numerous black friends because we're overcompensating. Why is white people having dreadlocks cultural appropriation, but then when Beyonce straightens her hair and dyes it blonde, that's perfectly fine. Why is it cultural appropriation to embrace black fashion music and culture, but then having our own fashion music and culture is backward, divisive, and nerdy? Why do you whine about the Oscars being racist in favor of white people when the number of black Oscar winners is exactly in line with the black population? Oh, I forgot, maths is racist too. Why is a racially motivated violent attack on a black person called a hate crime but then a racially motivated violent attack on a white person is called the knockout game. It just absolutely makes no sense. If only black people can call each other the N-word, can only white people call each other cracker? A creepy ass cracker? Yes. If white people don't understand what it's like to be poor. When you're white, you don't know what it's like to be living in a ghetto. You don't know what it's like to be poor. Why are America's poorest counties 95% white. Let's talk history. The Islamic Barbary slave trade, which oppressed whites, was far more brutal and lasted for far longer than the African slave trade. So if white people owe blacks reparations for slavery, can white people claim reparations from Arabs? Give me money, give me money, give me money. If reverse racism doesn't exist because white people are in power and it's impossible to be racist against them, at what point does this change? If the entire dominant culture, entertainment, and media complex, including BuzzFeed, 
now discriminates against white people by encouraging racism against white people, does that represent a form of power? And if it does, why should it be acceptable that the last acceptable form of racism is racism against white people? That's Paul Joseph Watson dominating as usual. That video is on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Let's make it go viral. I want to post that to our Facebook, too, on, as a video. Incredible. Now, riding shotgun for the next hour and 20 minutes is Lionel, LionelMedia.com. Follow him on Twitter, at Lionel Media. He is a former prosecutor. He is a constitutional lawyer. And he's, of course, been a radio, TV host, you name it. And we always enjoy getting him on to break down uh, what he sees generally in the world. So I want to talk to him. He's going to be then riding shotgun with us. That means popping in here and there uh, during the next hour. Because if something goes on, it's, it's like a troll thing. Uh, where and, and, and I'm not feeding the trolls, just for people to understand it. Sometimes I have a guest on, you know, like Fox and Friends, they're interrupting on about every 15 seconds. But everybody knows how to interrupt each other. And then and it's like a dialogue. It's not a monologue. Okay, and the top-rated shows out there have a lot going on. Uh, that's what we do, too. Not on purpose. It's just that's normal to have a big thing going on. So there'll be pieces where he goes for five minutes, and then I go for five minutes, and then we take some calls, or then somebody else pops in, and then he goes for five minutes or a minute or two minutes. And then we go back and forth covering different things, jumping on different things. It's a free-for-all. Like when I have any guest on, that's what we're doing is that we're going back and forth. I could just have no guest on, uh, but these are smart folks. I want to get their ideas, but I want to also jump in. Okay, the reason it sounds like I interrupt so much, which I've gotten better about over the years, is I just do it with, ah, you know, getting in there because a lot of my guests are not people that have been from the media, so they don't ever stop for somebody else to say something. So a lot of this is we have people watching and listening to the show that I get it, don't watch a lot of mainstream media, so you don't understand that just the format itself is one of not dumbing people down. I mean, here's an example. A lot of times people will sit there and debate whether it was a terror attack for four or five days in New York and New Jersey when we knew it was a terror attack within an hour, ISIS took responsibility. I don't do that. I'm not going to sit here with a round table and then debate if this is terrorism or not. I don't need mainstream media to tell me it's terrorism where I know it's terrorism. So it's that simple. I don't need the mainstream media to tell me Trump won or lost the debate. I'm going to make that decision myself. I think he narrowly won it. Because they went so far against him, and he and, and he was debating Lester Holt, not just Hillary Clinton. She interrupted him 40-plus times. Holt only went in six times. The questions were much tougher. He told him he was wrong. No, you were not against the Iraq war. We have the clips. We've played the clips from 2003 with him on Fox News and CNN saying, I don't think Bush should do it. We shouldn't go in there. I don't think this is a good idea. Donald Trump was right about the Iraq war. Get over it, you warmongering, scumbag, fake leftists that want the crown that you're these peaceniks. Hillary says she would attack Iran and Russia. I can play you the clips, idiots. And you don't have an invisibility shield from World War III just because you dress like the cast of The Hangover. I'm going to stop right there. I just, these people have no idea how much danger we're in. They're lying. They're destroying our free press. They're creating race war. And I'm going to say this and go, then give Lionel the rest of the hour because I am ranting. I'm going to say this and I'm done. Do you know why they're hyping race and why they're pushing it and why the left is using it worldwide to control things, why the UN is using migrant flows to break down country sovereignty? Because it's how you conquer. Race has been used forever because it's very effective and every culture has used race and class to control. Christians ended slavery in most parts of the world the last 200 plus years. We had huge wars over it because we wanted to make it be based on who you were and what you stood for and what you built. That The left and the UN are bringing racism back in the name of fighting it because it's a system that works. They're not doing it by accident. They know what they're doing. These little leftists going around bullying people, they know they're bullies. They like it. Do you understand that? All right, let's go to Lionel. Lionel, uh, wow, where do you want to start? I mean, obviously the debate, where you see the state of the world, Hillary saying how dare Trump try to look at putting a hotel in Cuba, which they've now opened up. What she's really saying is you got to go through me, the architect of this deal. I mean, there's just too much here. The irony level, it seems, couldn't go any higher, and now it's at hypocrisy level times, you know, infinity here. What's going on? Okay, now, Alex, I love you. 
but you've got to do what I do. You got to take a deep breath. You're right. I've been losing I'm not breathing. My mind. I'm not breathing. I'm not breathing. I have been losing my mind to the point where I think it's already lost. Let me start off with a very simple question. And I want you and everybody listening to your show to answer this question. Can you think of any, anything that Hillary Clinton has ever been involved in, any type of controversy, any type of, of shenanigans that did not directly involve feathering her own nest, lining her own pockets? Let me explain. You can talk all you want about the worst presidents in recent history. You might not like Bush, but I firmly believe that he thought, through perhaps maybe a distorted ideology, that somehow wars and, and globalism and imperialism benefited some strange neoconservative bent, I don't know. You can take Nixon. Nixon had his problems and Nixon was demented and crazed and psychotic, but it wasn't about money. Go back. I can only think of maybe Harding. I'm trying to think, when have we ever had a president who was only about lining his or her pockets? This craven, venal, naked graft and greed. If Hillary Clinton said, you don't understand something, I believe in, in negotiating with Saudi Arabia and encouraging the subjugation of women and gays because of an ideology. I believe in globalism. I believe in the Clinton Global Initiative, not because it makes the Gambino crime family look like the Junior League by comparison. No, I believe in an ideology of basically screwing poor people and going into Haiti and, 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 and selling diluted and watered down AIDS drugs. No, it's not about money. It is about money. It's as though, Alex, we are so bamboozled by this woman, I have never, and I want you to think about this, I have never seen anyone, sometimes after the fact, yeah, yeah, they go into office and then later on they, they kind of leverage their position. But it's always ideology. Even Brzezinski and Kissinger and these folks, yes, there was imperialism. Hillary Clinton is, is, is a latter-day version of almost of, of, of Warren Gamaliel Harding. It's, it is the most craven, venal, base, naked, graft. And they corruption. stole George Washington's China when they left the first time. And Harding, interesting is it, supposedly uh, uh, lost the China in a poker game. Look, I want to talk about a couple of things here. Because, Alex, I, I, I'm in such a strange position. I am not advocating Donald Trump because I never even get to Donald Trump. I don't even get to his position. I am exactly. She is totally default. Yeah. She is totally just. She's a total criminal. She's a joke. Only in America, through this strange parallel universe, through a kind of a, a Milgram experiment, this weird Stanford prison experiment, this weird mind distortion, this this up is down. How this woman walking around like a glorified oven mitt and Mao jackets can look us <laughs> in the eye. Look us in the eye. Let me ask you this, Alex. If I went and I said, listen, Dr. Jones, um, I need you to sign off for me. I'm, I'm going to be doing carpooling for kids. I'm a school bus driver. Now, I forgot to tell you, in 2012, I had a very serious concussion. I had blood clots. I had a problem. I was out for six months. I had to wear Fresnel lenses for diplopia prismatic lenses because of double vision. I then wear Zeiss One Blue photosensitive optical uh, uh, lenses that are normally attributed to epilepsy. I am seen at 9-11, and by the way, please, I know what you're thinking, but the corollary between the collapse of Hillary on the day when we remember the horrible collapse of towers, a sick analogy to be sure. But there she was. Do you believe me or your lying eyes? As she, Alex, not stumbled or not tumbled. I fell like completely point. over, had to be held up. They couldn't even hold her up. Her feet dragging behind her. Lost a shoe. And they're doing, they're doing neurological tests like you're milking a cow to put her into an ambulance, an ambulance. And as I'm seeing this, if I said, Dr. Jones, in view of the foregoing, would you allow me, would you sign off on me 
being a school bus driver for insurance business uh, purposes. You say, hell no. What are you kidding me? But listen, it gets but worse. It gets worse, Lionel. We have the reporters for days saying she didn't fall down. It's a conspiracy theory. She only stumbled and they would cut it before she fell down in mass, de mass deception at levels I've never seen. I mean, this is crazy. Now, now Alex, you know, you know, I, I think that after a while, what we're seeing here is if I completely repeat lies to you. I'm a psych major. By oh, here we go. Look at this. Look at this. This is a stumble. This is a stumble. Look at this. She's being held up. Look at this. She, she's teetering oh, she's over. Having, she's having a seizure. Everyone knows what a seizure and, looks like. And there is the handler. The handler. Look at this. She's falling. She loses her shoe here. There is the handler, this omnipresent man who stands there, and when was the last time you ever saw Mitt Romney or Ronald Reagan or anybody have somebody come up who's holding, oh, I love this, not a benzo pen, but a flashlight. Okay, fair enough. When was the last time you ever saw this medical attendant with a flashlight, look at this, with a flashlight going up and saying, it's okay. Alex, have you ever been to a Broadway play or any kind of, a, uh, of an event where they say flash photography? Be on the lookout, alert, flash photography, because it is. it has been known to trigger seizures where you seize. My God, the fact that I even have to explain this. And by the way, let me explain something. I'm not. Look, I, I, I had parents and in their last days, I know what it's like to sit there and you worry and you and you swallow hard every time they forget something. I'm not laughing in some kind of a ghoulish day. Oh, I know. They spin it. That, no, exactly. No, she's not sick. But then now we're making fun of her illness. But I want to go back to this, Lionel. Yes. It, it's what Julian Assange said about a month ago. He said she is a demon, and the press climate where they're covering up for her is super dangerous. We're dealing with authoritar uh, dangerous authoritarianism. She's going to put all of our necks in a noose. And, and he, he's saying she's physically dangerous, and she's got a crazy press ready to see us arrested. Hell, I bet if they went full authoritarian and said, we're going to start executing, you know, Alex Jones and Matt Drudge on live TV, the average Democrat, I'm not kidding, would say, yeah, kill them. And that we've gone out and talked to people on the street. The majority of Democrats say, kill gun owners, put them in prison. I mean, there, there seems to be such a ravenous authoritarianism about them well, now. What happens? You just now, you, you mentioned, uh, you, you mentioned uh, Julian Assange. We have Gerald Nadler from New York talking about what, investigating Roger Stone? Because he, he talked with, I, I don't understand this. I don't. I don't understand. Yeah, the New York Times and everybody else can talk to Julian Assange, but but if Roger Stone talks to him for his right. show, oh my gosh, well, they've come up and said that I'm a Russian agent on MSNBC. Oh, oh that's another one too. I Do you remember, this might be a little before your time, but when I was a kid, I remember when Rocky and Bullwinkle, we weren't really sure what this was, but it was Boris Badenoff and Natasha, and it was all this Russophobic Cold War Red Scare nonsense and we were kind of acclimated to the idea that russian russian russophobic scary russian russian okay now it's putin 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 it used to be the dog ate my homework now it's russia did it putin did it in fact we had this terrible crash in hoboken i'm waiting for somebody to blame the russians for this but oh no 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 they asked they asked uh, cnn asked hillary uh if the russians were behind the terror attack in new york a few weeks ago and uh, she went into the talk and said yeah well, but, but by the way, uh, but let me go back to what, and, and, and I'm doing what you're doing because my mind, I need some of your medication, not medication, whatever you sell, because my mind is like the clutch is in and it's spinning and I'm redlining and I'm trying to. Exactly, because it's supposed to be like that. It, it, we're done with the evidence, but it's just mountains of it, more insane right. every day where but I'm just recently, like in, in a lunatic asylum. But recently, the best one I heard was the FEC, the, F, the Federal Election Commission, is now saying that they want to consider whether individuals or, or corporate entities with the smallest, most the most de minimis smidgen of foreign ownership, not only Fox, but the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times, which is basically now what, a Mexican organization? Carlos, okay, fine. But whether they should not be able to opine as far as elections go. And then that'll the all be selectively enforced, though. Precisely. Now, you have the FCC at the same time advocating foreign ownerships here, buy, come in, buy, take our licenses, but don't say anything about our elections. 
So what's happening right now is they're bringing in foreign this, media who's used to being under tyranny to basically supplant everything. It'll be Americans that work there, but foreign owned. And then there'll be a regulation that it's basically fairness doctrine over the Internet, broadcast, TV, radio. This is how they're bringing it all in, but with new different labels. And the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow takes over the Internet. I mean, you can see it all. Well, what happens now is, and, and again, I want to say this because I'm afraid that through my own freneticism, I'm going to lose track of this. You know, Alex, I believe I'm a psychologist. I always wanted to be the psychologist general, not the attorney general, not the attorney general, but the psychologist general. I want to tell people, and I don't want to bring up the whole Goebbels thing about keep repeating the lie, but what happens is I've always loved con men. You know, American greed, I love that word, the Stacey Keach narrates it. And great con men, confidence men, say things with they look you straight in the eye and they will tell you something. And the bigger the lie, the more believable it is because they say yes. Now, here's what I'm talking about. Tolstoy said that history would be a wonderful thing if only it were true. And every day we see this in our own mainstream Ted Baxter sock puppet media. To wit, birtherism. And by the way, it's lesser included offense of otherism where they accused Barack Obama of being other than an American, other, Mark Penn, the Mark Penn memo. Go online, read the Google. No, that is one thing that even mainstream media later had to admit because they got caught. Uh, Hillary was, did launch that. It, well, not her, 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 her surrogate, her whatever it is. But then Sidney Blumenthal goes to the McClatchy group and says, no, no, you don't understand something. And they celebrate it. And then they look you straight in the eye and say, it never happened. And the mainstream media, uh, 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 the Absolutely, stay there. We're going to be right back on the other side with Lionel. I'm Alex Schultz. We are back live. Lionel from Lionel Media is our guest. He's a lawyer, former prosecutor. And his Twitter is Twitter at Lionel Media, LionelMedia.com. I should also add that we have the new app out. It, it's just phase one. It's got video feeds, audio feeds, uh, and, a, and news feeds. It's got a modern format. That's just the first rollout. We're going to add a bunch of other features by election. I mean, a lot of this stuff's almost done uh, to the app, Infowars.com forward slash app to uh, get that. And, and please send that link to your friends and family. We have the original app that over a million people have downloaded. That is an Apple app. A lot of other folks have made Droid knockoffs which is fine, uh, but there's only uh, two apps that we have. They're both free, and that's the InfoWars uh, live app that's new on both Droid and on Apple, uh, and it's free at InfoWars.com forward slash app. I'll take you to the links, uh, and then we have another radio one that has a news feed and uh, is just audio that works really well. It's almost six years old, and you can find that at the Apple Store as well or links to it on InfoWars.com. Lionel, this is a short segment. Long segment coming up. I want to get into some other news here, but let me just ask you, what do you really think happened with the debate? Um, do you think he won, draw? Uh, and and what, what would you do in the next debate if you were Donald Trump? Okay, good. First of all, he lost the debate. I, I don't know where he was. I don't know what he was thinking. A couple of things. You got, you, you got Alex, this woman was on death's door. I don't know what the hell she's taking, but that should be the best neurological drug uh, what, whatever it was, she didn't take a sip of water. She was, I mean, she was bouncing around. I don't know what it was, but whatever she's taking, I want more of it. Here's what he needed to do. Number one, you got to understand something. The Lester Holt is a shill. He's a sock puppet. Everybody knew this. I knew this. He's got to go out and write down the following. Mr. Trump, you've got five things to say, 10 things to say, and what you do, and by the way, whenever you go on any TV show, listen to me, I know what I'm talking about. You're going to say what you want to say, irrespective of what they ask you. And if they don't ask you, say, you know, it's funny, that reminds me. And then you go right into it. Absolutely. He, ne he never even talked about immigration. The thing that brought him to the dance, he never even talked about. Number two, he's got to understand that he has a plan. When he won the American... Uh, and I'm not endorsing him, but when he beat soundly Alex, 16 of the best and the brightest of the Republican Party, coming to senators, governors, including a brain surgeon, an actual brain surgeon, he didn't go out there slamming Hillary Clinton. He gave them a vision, and he talked about basically a couple of things, illegal immigration, 
and the sense of crime and losing, not being able to to, to feel. Yeah, America's going to win again. She's the loser. I'm the winner. I'm the future. Precise. She's the best. And what he needed to do was to go after, say these four things. However, however. Well, I know what happened. He was told by a bunch of media advisors, and I think even Roger Ailes. That's all about how you look, and, the, and you're going yeah. after the 20 percent that's undecided, and you want to look nice, and you want to look friendly, and you, you don't want to be the stereotype they claim you've been. You're not going to get those people anyway. You need to go out and destroy Hillary Clinton. You've got to look. He's got to look at Hillary Clinton like somebody does in a bad family intervention. When you've got a spouse or a loved one who's yapping about you, and uh, I don't have experience. I would have said. I, I would have said. How, uh, but, but, go ahead, sir. No, no, but, but, but you have to look at her like saying, mm -hmm, okay. There was a debate years ago where Daniel Patrick Moynihan ran for Senate against a woman named Bernadette Castro here in New York. Now, Daniel Patrick Moynihan is a, was a bona fide genius. Alex, he never even looked at her the whole time, never even acknowledged her. He said the following. Now, here's the thing that she has to do. There are a couple of things. Number one, when Hillary Clinton talks about taxes, when Hillary Clinton brings that up, what they do is that's their wedge. And people who are not, remember, nobody is for Hillary. They're against Trump. Exactly. Stay nobody there. Let's talk more about what you do. I totally agree with you, Lionel. We'll try to take this video, maybe send it to Trump, uh, because he just could have destroyed her. When she said, oh, you ripped off an architect. Oh, really? Was that ever found in court? No, it wasn't. You're a liar. By the way, you stole the China and then said you didn't have it and had to give it back months later. It was worth a million dollars. You are a thief. You are a Chinese spy. Only 38 days left. You know, Lionel was a uh, prosecutor, he's a constitutional lawyer, TV host, radio host, and he, he was pointing out that his minor was in psychology. He's a smart guy, and I think we're similar in a lot of ways because I was saying this at the start of the show, th this election is really getting to me. Uh, I mean, I've been doing this 21 years, and I'm getting freaked out uh, because... If I lived in a community and, you know, there were neighbors just eating their fingers uh, or there were suddenly people, you know, just jumping off bridges, which is actually happening. Mental illness is just exploding. Insanity. Uh, I mean, that's all the metrics show it. And it's because the social engineers that are running things are crazy. And if you've studied psychology, you learn that the highest level of mental illness is in psychologists and psychiatrists. Now, I'm not saying there aren't some great ones. I'm not saying there isn't a lot of truth to what they say. Some of them do wonderful things. Some of them work for centralized systems and do horrible things and work for big corporations to you know deceive the public. But it fundamentally does something to me because I'm beyond hating Hillary Clinton. To see this weird, out-of-control person that looks like she's wearing a plastic Joker mask and to know all the crimes she's committed and then... To sit there and see her go, Donald Trump didn't pay an architect all the money he said he would. I went and looked up the case. Yeah, the guy tried to charge a lot more. Trump stood up for himself. But the point is, is this is his big crime? Not turning ISIS loose to kill hundreds of thousands in Syria? Not, uh, the, you know, all the sellout deals of this country? I mean, Hillary is horrible. Folks, I criticize the Bushes because one of their foundations kept half the money from Haiti. And they used it to start some other charities. And the Bushes, I mean, I thought were villains. And, they, and they're friends with Hillary, so it just shows birds of a feather fly together. Even the Washington Post had to admit that Hillary, we can pull this up, gave one year, it was like 4.6%, the other 5.7% of the money that was raised for Haiti. They just kept 90 plus percent for themselves right off the top. We're not saying only 5% actually got to the little kids. We're saying the, the total, the foundation, just in general, only 5%. And then you learn that 97%, you can just type this into Google, it's mainstream news, 97% of the Clinton Foundation, that was one year, another year it was 98, another year it was 96, went to themselves they they give the money to themselves and when they do a charitable uh, charitable donation it's then again to themselves to get out of taxes I, I mean ladies and gentlemen this is organized crime this is fraud this is money laundering this is admitted and lionel was a prosecutor that dealt with this he's a constitutional lawyer correct me if i'm wrong but i mean i run a business i run an operation i know about the laws okay i study things i've talked to experts this is so flagrant that she's above the law. And the question is then, in law, 
What happens now that Comey has totally discredited himself? What happens when they admit, okay, we basically give the equivalent of pardons? That's what these immunities are. I don't think you can really do that. I mean, this is, this is bizarre because this isn't to get the capo above them. This is so they can get out of trouble because they got caught lying. And then they just meet on airplanes with Bill Clinton, Loretta Lynch. They don't care. They're, they're so full of hubris. But it seems like they're bipolar. They're like full of hubris and out of And the next minute they're super scared running around like chickens with their heads cut off. This, this all goes back to psychology. Let's cover this now. Just the state of the lawlessness, Lionel, because you're a former prosecutor. And then let's get back into what, what Trump should do. I mean, he shouldn't be vicious. He shouldn't be spitting at her. But, I mean, I would say what you said. This is a joke. I mean, this well, is ridiculous. You're accusing I, me of fraud when I have no history of fraud. And then you are this crime boss woman. I mean, I, go ahead. Well, that is a crime. Well, see, stop for a second. Uh, um, again, the, the, the problem that I have is because... It is so overwhelming. You have to, the very fact that I have to even explain this, the fact that nobody's rioting in the streets goes to show you how detached this country is. Alex, here is the difference. I don't care whether an organization, whether it be the Red Cross, the United Way, the Clinton Foundation, or Al Sharpton's National Action Network, we know how that works. That's not the issue. The issue is simply this. When you are the secretary of state and you can't say, give me the money, pay me the money, and I'll give you most favored nation status or arms or whatever, you can't do that. What she did was, I'll tell you what, pay the Clinton Foundation. That's the connection. That's the nexus. Alex, this is an existential life or death, uh, death dance, if you will. For the Clintons, because if Hillary loses this, Chelsea goes bye-bye, Bill Clinton goes bye-bye, and the Clinton Crime Initiative, again, that makes the Gambino crime family look like the junior league, they go away because you're using the office of the Secretary of State. That is the issue. Now, well, I mean, I mean let's go further. They lied to Congress. We have all the clips. It's been confirmed that they are getting massive money. Hillary says, I get no money from the foundation. The, the, the jets, the cars, the homes, the meals, everything is on it. They've got the global initiative, too. And then Chelsea gets six plus mil a year. Then the foundation pays for her $10 million penthouse. Alex, I still say that's not even the I, I don't even care about that. No, it's I got really it. I got it. You, you cannot be the secretary of state and then take money right. to then give access to the Chinese president. By the way, yeah. I, was, I, I wasn't I was thinking big enough. I thought she was just selling out U.S. interests because we knew that. I didn't realize she's like selling out Chinese interest to other people and she representing. My friend, my dear, and I'm proud to say this, and I say it proudly, my dear friend, from the time I met you and I introduced you, and I, for the first I remember hearing you for the first time. And, and, and I say that again. I'm proud to say you're my friend, but my friend. No, you're right. I have a blind spot. I don't think they're so criminal. What we're talking about here is, is, is something that, and I started off by asking you this question. If Hillary Clinton was bound by an ideology that had nothing to do with lining her own pockets, it had nothing to do with the, you know the, this this craven vino naked. Graph. No, you get it. She's a total sociopath that's so I white trash. Up. She steals China. But 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 aside from that, low rent. She is the person. Look, Bill Clinton never had that desire for. I mean, money. I would just be honored to eat off the stuff that George Washington had. I mean, right. these people are just oh man. Well, let me go back to what going back, and, and I know I'm jumping all over the place, but that's my nature. Now, going back to the debate, I would teach. Uh, Donald Trump, like a kata, whether you do Krav Maga or any kind of martial arts, when they do this, you do this. When she brings up or anybody brings up bankruptcy, you can say, hey, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. By the way, that's a great tactic. Whenever you tell your opponent, I'm glad you brought that up, that's not good. No, no I'd say, oh, wonderful. I'm glad you brought up corruption. That's all made up. You're the one sold us out to the communist Chinese. Right. You're the one stole the China. You're the one well, that has the foundation. Yet. What about you? Know? Better yet. 
Hey, kids, let's talk about this thing called bankruptcies, okay? Because, you know, it's funny you say that. And I want to talk to you, all you millennials, all, by the way, who were hosed by Bernie Sanders, who aren't necessarily going to vote for Hillary Clinton out of default, but who have been completely abandoned by this corrupt and venal system. I want to talk to you about this thing called white water. Once upon a time, there was something so big that the governor of Arkansas went to prison and people were indicted. This makes you talk about Atlantic City, where the city went bankrupt where we have casinos and revel and win and this you're talking about i have 400 corporations five went bankrupt let's look at mitt romney's folks bankruptcy is not the issue now when she brings up trump university pray to god she brings it up say i'm glad you brought that up i want to talk about something called laureate and how laureate was just absolutely ignored or not known by the mainstream media never ceases to amaze me how they do that when you talk about and this is what's interesting when you talk about how he's fat shaming in 90 whatever some type of a beauty pageant contestant i want to talk about sexual predation not a lothario not somebody who's a skirt chaser, not somebody, but somebody who is a sexual predator. Now, remember, Bill Cosby, when people said, you know, that happened a long time ago, who cares? It doesn't matter. Yeah, but you know, that was 40 years ago. It doesn't matter. Nobody blamed Bill Cosby's wife. They're making, they're looking at, at Hillary as the innocent spouse. What people and young people and women and feminists who worry about fat shaming have to understand. No, this is about raping women worse than Bill Cosby, and she was the cover. She was the beard for his and, rapes. Lionel, stay right indeed. there, my friend. We're going to come right back to you on the other side. Please don't forget, we have our new probiotic out, and it also helps fund our operation. Uh, it is Biome Defense, the very best out there, folks. Do your own research. It's very, very affordable. Uh, comparable systems cost a lot more. Check it out today, InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. I want to thank you all for your support, your Hillary for Prison shirts as well at InfoWarsStore.com. Now, solutions from Science, Summer Solar Sale. Their website is SummerSolarSale.com. They've extended it, but it is about to end. Ladies and gentlemen, you can find amazing solar generators and control panels, the very latest, best technologies, the best prices, wind turbines, EMP bags, smart LED light bulbs, Give them a call, 877-327-0365, or Summer Solar Sale, that's one word, summersolarsale.com. That's 877-327-0365. They've been a sponsor of ours, I don't know, 14, 15 years, uh, and it's great to have them back on the air with us. Solutions from science, summersolarsale.com, 877-327-0365. Amazing systems, great folks. Check them out, summersolarsale.com, and you're not just getting great products at great prices. It's funding this operation. Uh, now, we've talked about how crazy and how bad and how evil these people are. Let's talk about when we come back. What will happen if this crime boss becomes president? Or also how we can still stop her. It was Nietzsche that said that uh, don't stare too long into the abyss. You might become the abyss. And, and, and so... Good things are happening. Nationalism is, is rising. For a portion of the public that is waking up, Good things are happening. Uh, but for folks that aren't waking up, they're just getting further into delusion. And an example of this, Lionel, and then I want to get into where you think the future is going. I'm just your dead reckoning. I wanted to ask you where you think things are going, but I also wanted to ask you, there's a video that's up on InfoWars.com that I haven't gotten to yet. We may play it in the fourth hour. Where our reporter went out to the trendy areas of Austin, South Congress, University of Texas, and said, who do you think won the debate? And I found it very curious they all said, Hillary, because I want her to be president, I'm going to say she won because I want her to win. They didn't say, well, she did this better and did that better or Trump didn't do this good. They didn't have any information. It was just, he's racist and I want her to be the winner. So what they're saying is they just delusionally look at, say, a white cloud, and if they want it to be purple, they say it's purple, even though it's white. So so uh, let's... Uh, pot his audio up. I mean, what do you call the psychology? I mean, you say you think Trump lost. I get it. He dropped the ball. He could have done a lot better. So you're saying you think he lost because he didn't do what he should have and didn't have a spectacular wait, wait. victory. I think I think he narrowly won because they so rigged it, people saw that. And I think the polls reflect that. I think the fact that she could stand up, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe she did win. The point is, is it's 
Well, but, 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 but look, look. If but we're not debating watching, that. The point is the delusion. The delusion. What's this delusion where they think, well, I want, I want her to be president, so she won the debate. Right. Okay, I mean, first of all. What do you call that? Okay, it's a Rorschach test. It's a Rorschach test. It is when you think your child is the cutest little thing and the most beautiful, and you are. It's There's a difference between illusion and hallucination. Because an illusion is something that you distort that is there. A hallucination is something that's not there. Now, Trump's second debate performance is going to be much better. Remember, Reagan's first debate was awful. Obama's debate was awful. It's not a debate. What he needs to do is a couple of things. The number one rule is you don't engage her on the facts, just like I did with Piers Morgan. You, you totally ignore them. You laugh at them. You say, oh, great. You act confident. You run her over. When, when, when you are bringing a loved one, let's say before a judge, and you're asking a court to involuntarily commit this crazed loved one, you speak deferentially, but without acknowledging her. You almost are dismissive by being over courteous. He has to worry about this as follows. Number one, he has to be himself. Look, Alex, you know and I know that if you've been in the media long enough, somebody always tries to change you. And the reason for your success is you being you. It's not the way I would do it. It's not the way I could do it. It's the way you do it. So he has to do that. Number Donald two, Trump has to be Donald Trump and exactly. stop listening to all these establishment Republicans he's got around Exactly. Him. He also does not have to worry or listen to anything but the individual. And I want you to think about this. You know, you do this very well. When you do radio or podcasting, you always speak into the mic as though you're imagining somebody sitting in front of you. You imagine their face versus broadcasting. And what you do is you look into the camera and you say, America worries about the following. Eleanor Roosevelt said this about FDR, and it's true. Pick three things. Very simple. Reagan said, do you feel better off than you did four years ago? I would say, do you feel safer? Do you like where this country is going? Here's what we need to do. And by the way, this is all no-brainers. It's almost like he's being sabotaged. Exactly. It's axiomatic. Because believe me, you know, Alex, you and I, this may come as a shock to you, but sometimes I've been accused of being conspiratorial. And as a great Gore Vidal said, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a conspiracy analyst. And sometimes I'm wondering, could it be beyond the realm of Machiavellian artifice and stratagems for him to be some kind of a spoiler? Nah, I don't want to think about this. I think he's very serious. I'll tell you I this. I, 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 Trump's for real, or he's the greatest actor in history. But if he starts dropping the ball more at these debates, then I'm going to say th that he's taken a dive. But I don't think that's happening. I'm not no. introducing that. But I will tell you, there's no doubt there are political operatives in there who want the next job and the next job and want to play footsie with the establishment uh, who are drinking the wrong Kool-Aid because... Let me tell you something right now, and, and you look at this. I want to uh, 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 bring you up to speed. You know, Stalin allegedly said, that was a bit hyperbolic, but Stalin supposedly said, you get out the votes or you get the votes, let me count the votes. You know, Palast and others have talked about how there have been classic ways in the past, Alex, to go after, let's say, allegedly, perhaps, poor votes, African-American votes, Latino votes. Well, in this particular case, remember, Hillary is not a Democrat. She's not a progressive. She's not a liberal. For her to win, you've got to steal Republican votes, theoretically. And you don't do that. So what's she going to do? How do you steal the election from the established? You bring in the Homeland Security and the U.N. Security Force and the EU Security Force and you quote guard the election but earlier they said there's no such thing as election fraud but now they're desperately We're on guarding the march, it from the russians the empire roger stone's coming up with us stay there Lionel. all right roger stone um is joining us via the phone and we've got lionel via video skype again this is a syndicated radio broadcast is its roots but it is a tv as well but it's not a controlled teleprompter uh, format like cnn or msnbc or fox it is Real analysis, real history, real information. Uh, and it's it's not people that are controlled. I don't pre-screen my guest. I don't sit there and tell them what they can talk about and you know, where they can go. We really uh, break things down. We don't tell callers what they can talk about either. I mean, we talk about certain topics we want to cover. But this is the future of the media. And that's where it's going. And that's why they have to come in with massive censorship. Lionel 
hit an area earlier that I want to bring up with uh, Roger Schoen after we hit the campaign. And that's that they're saying if, if there's foreign media in this country, that it can't then talk about our election. But then they're bringing in foreign companies that hire Americans. And then people don't even know it's foreign. And then, of course, it'll be government politics. It'll all be selectively enforced. It won't be neutral. There's no such thing. They're like, Jones admits, you know, he's a wild libertarian supporter of Trump. Well, of course I admit it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm open about what I do. I can barely keep track of all the news and information, much less sit here and spin stuff and come up with angles. I come up with what the reality is for me and my own research and history. That's what's scary about these millennials we interview. They're on the street and they're like, well, I, I think Hillary won the debate because, because I want her to be president, so I want to say she won. They think like she wins because they say she did instead of did she really win the debate? Like, I want Trump to say he won that debate. I think he narrowly did because they overdid it. They bullied him so bad and interrupted and did it. P people are sick of this. They're sick of the MSM. So the Washington Post said on Monday, don't call us the media anymore. And we're very condescending. We're going to talk to Roger Stone about that as well. But regardless, there is a collapse of the establishment media. That's what Roger Stone's doing a radio show now on GCN. Lionel's doing his own show. and He's been on national radio and TV in his own right. It's why more and more of you are doing it. And in this college of ideas of real diversity and real competition, the best will rise to the top unless they try to rig it. So in, in a, just a couple days, October 1st, the U.N. takes over the web. Doesn't mean they're going to shut it off today, but the fix is already in. So we'll talk about that. Before I go any further, again, this is about to end. The summer's been over for a week. They've barely extended it because I was supposed to plug this a month ago. I just didn't do it. Uh, I've been so busy. I'm just skipping breaks, not plugging sponsors. I mean, I'm crazy, okay? Quite frankly, uh, to the point we've been losing money lately because I've been I've been so busy. So that's why you're hearing all these plugs. Uh, solutions from Science, SummerSolarSale.com. They're amazing. They have uh, wind turbines, solar generators, EMP bags, smart LED light bulbs. Just a great cornucopia of really high-quality products. They go out and find the best products that you need. And then the latest cutting edge, they sell it discounted. They have informational videos on their site. SummerSolarCell.com. Buy one perfect power package and use coupon code ALEX to... Receive another one absolutely free. That is a big deal. So check out their solar generators, wind turbines, and more. SummerSolarCell.com or 877-327-0365, 877-327-0365. And again, it's sponsors like that that make the broadcast possible. And when you hear me plugging a sponsor, that means I'm endorsing it. People get confused on local radio stations here, local ads. They think I'm endorsing it. They'll hear like an ad for a topless bar. You got a topless bar on your show. That, that, I'm, I'm not down there at the Cheetah or whatever it is, you know, in whatever state you're at or the, the ladies, such and such. You know, there's a lot of confusion out there by some people. But when you hear me plugging something, that means I believe in it. High quality folks from Solutions from Science. And that's SummerSolarCell.com. Finally, we have incredible nutraceuticals that everybody needs at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. Our new probiotic, Biome Defense, is in. The Hillary for Prison shirt, I've decided that I'm only going to sell that until the election. I'm going to come up with something new at that point, a new meme. I haven't figured out what it is yet, but uh, the, the, the other folks will sell the ripoffs of it. That's fine. I don't care. I'm ending this third version. This will be the third and final collector edition of Hillary for Prison with the red InfoWars.com on the sleeve and the legalized freedom on the back. I'm ending it. So if you haven't gotten yours or you want another piece of history, InfoWarsStore.com. Now, another shirt that was designed and, and, and licensed from Roger Stone is the Bill Clinton rape shirt. Looks like the, you know, communist-style Obama hope shirt that says, rape, wear it, get aggressive, start the conversations, get on TV with it. In fact, I'm going to say this right now. Anyone that gets on national TV with the shirt clearly for more than five seconds, gets $1,000. That means, you know, behind cameras, you name it. Anyone that gets it on air on national TV and gets the words out, Bill Clinton is a rapist, or things along that line with a bullhorn, I could go to this right now. $5,000 until a budget of 100000 has been spent. But you got to upload the video to YouTube and Facebook. You got to get it to us, and I pay all these bounties. I pay all these contests. 
We've had a hundred thousand dollar contest before. My budget's a hundred thousand. That means if you know a bunch of people do this, I'll pay up to a hundred thousand and stop it. That's one thousand dollars if you just get the shirt on national TV. Visually rape. Okay? It is it is five thousand dollars if you get the audio legally and lawfully. They gotta be outdoors, one other little events, you gotta have a bullhorn, you gotta have the shirt on or have somebody with it, or Maybe a big sign with it on it, and two of you hold it up, and then somebody else bullhorns, Bill Clinton is a rapist, not a philanderer. Hillary covers up the rape. Now, I'm going to go back to Lionel here in just a moment. He's riding a shotgun with us, and Roger Stone's popping in. Uh, Roger, thanks for coming on. There's so much to get to today. Uh, Lionel, who I know is a, a cohort uh, occasionally on radio with you, is here. Uh, there's so much to get into. Front and center, CNN, big cover story. They're airing it every hour. They say you're running the Trump campaign. You're, you're one of the worst guys in the, in the quote, boys club, uh, and that supposedly you're the one that's got him out there saying philanderer. And I talked to you this morning. That's more BS, isn't it? Yeah, this is very disturbing, Alex, because uh, CNN, uh, and I have many friends that work there, is completely misrepresenting my views. I have never said publicly or privately uh, that Donald Trump should make an issue of Bill's infidelities, uh, his indiscretions, uh, his consensual sexual relations. I, I don't think the voters care. Uh, and in fact, Hillary just plays off it and acts like the victim. No, I think that the, uh, the, the issue here is rape. It's sexual assault. It's violence against women. Juanita Broderick, Eileen Wellstone, Liz Ward Grayson, Regina Hopper Blakely, Kathleen Willey, Sandra Allen James, Kathy Bradshaw, Christy Zercher, Paula Jones, Carolyn Moffitt, uh, among others. All of these women were assaulted uh, by Bill, sexually assaulted, in some cases raped, in other cases bitten. Uh, and in every case, it is Hillary Clinton who has led the cover-up. It is Hillary Clinton who has hired the private detectives and the lawyers to threaten and harass these women, uh, to dig up dirt on them, to try to discredit them, to, at the end of the day, threaten and bully them into silence. I have never advocated the use of Bill's philandering as an issue. Now, I don't know what others are advocating. I, I saw this piece on CNN that says I'm the member of some boys club. I couldn't tell you what Newt Gingrich is advising or Michael Cohen or Rudy Giuliani or, or uh, uh, Newt Gingrich. I have no idea what their advice is. I only know what I have said. I've written a book about this, The Clinton's War on Women. It's available right now at the InfoWars store. It's available on Amazon. It's avail available on Barnes and Noble. You won't find much in there about consensual. Well, this is how they this is how they lie about us all. They always misrepresent what we're really saying, and this is on purpose. Obviously, they know that you wrote the blueprint with all the admitted facts about their war on women and about how she's a beard for his sex addiction and 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 you know, rape addiction. I mean, he's a Ted Bundy type, uh, and so they're just diverting it. And saying, oh, the philandering. In fact, I've even some stories like, even though Stone admits he's got a wild life, he's a hypocrite and he's mad that Bill's got women. Again, these people are total Decepticons. Yeah, look, I, I'm a libertine. I make no bones about it. But I've never raped anybody. I've never assaulted anybody. I've never bitten any women. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't think consensual sex is of any interest to the voters. Now, now, did you ever bite a woman a, a little bit if she wanted you to? Now, let's be honest. Well, I'm not going to get into that okay. because I'm a happily married man. I but, know, of course. But, 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 but the, the entire disinformation campaign, I might just watch CNN in disbelief and see Brooke Baldwin, who I think is a pretty nice lady, talk Talking about Bill's indiscretions. I'm not interested. No voters interested. That's not the issue here. But for Hillary to raise the questions of Miss Venezuela or Miss Universe from Venezuela, who hardly seems to be a sterling character, uh, who cares? Uh, when when the Clintons are uh, are systematically, in Bill's case, assaulting women, and Hillary is threatening and bullying them, and when their policies are empowering, sure. uh, you know, radical uh, Islamics who are stoning women, 
cutting off women's genitals, uh, subjecting women to third Why didn't Trump? Why didn't Trump come back with? You are the lady that stays in the same hotel room with Uma Abedin, whose mother is the top genital mutilation supporter in the world. Yeah, no, look, there, there are so many uh, extraordinary lapses here by the mainstream media. They've gone completely... I've got insane. Lionel here, and, and he can jump at any time he wants, but, but Roger, shifting gears out of this, our audience gets it, they understand it. I mean, there's new people tuning in all the time, but if they haven't woken up by now, they probably never will. What are you concerned about? I think Trump is still ahead. I think he barely won the debate uh, in that they overdid it with the attacks. It was so rigged. That's the only reason he won. I think he did via expectations. I think, you know, in ways he lost to Hillary. I think he knows that now and is coming out. And I think he's going to now go on the attack. I know that uh, little birds and things have been talking to him, you know, about what's going on. But, but what would you advise Trump or anybody debating Hillary Clinton to say or do? Um, well, I'm not going to... Uh, divulge directly what my advice may or may not be, but I think if anyone reads my book, they'll understand it. Uh, Hillary Clinton raised the question of mandatory minimum sentences? Really? You mean the ones that she and her husband gave us in the 1994 crime bill? How could any black person vote for Bill's wife when she called them super predators who must be made to heal. Let's be very clear. The 1994 crime bill pushed by the Clintons has incarcerated an entire generation of young black men for the nonviolent crime of possession. Of and by the way, we have a former prosecutor drugs. here, Lionel uh, from LionelMedia.com. Lionel, you want to jump in here? You know more about this than I do. Well, you know, there's a, this, this whole issue has been replete with lies. Look at how they lied about uh, claiming that stop and frisk was now illegal. Stop and frisk has been the law of the land since 1968 in the case called Terry against Ohio. What they do is they just make things up. What the Clintons have been responsible for is advocating and maintaining a prison industrial complex. And what amazes me is as long as the sock puppet Ted Baxter mainstream media continue to run and act as a rodeo clown, meaning diverting the attention of the charging bull, diverting the attention from what would normally be an inquisitive public. See, they are part and parcel. They are co-conspirators. They're accessories in this disinformation front. Because if the public really understood just an idea, and Roger, what, what I started off with in explaining to, to uh, Alex was what I cannot get away from is the fact that we can argue all day long about ideologies of, of politicians. You might or might not have preferred what Reagan or Nixon or Bush or Carter did, but we never believed that they were part of a, a craven, venal, naked graft and corruption lining of the pockets. Everything that is the essence of Hillary Clinton is about her making money. That's it. It's not ideology. It's not a direction. It's not a vision. It's not a platform. It's not a future. It's about the lowest form of graft there is, her making money. She's subject to being bought and sold. So not that it would change anything, but, you know, Roger and Alex, if she could say to you, you don't understand. I firmly believe in the tenets and the precepts of what I'm saying based upon a grander, loftier goal of the uh, predominance of a particular idea. Fine. I would have a problem with it, but it's not even about that. There is no substance. It's no, about she money. She has no ideology other than the ideology of money. And that's my next that's question for you, Roger. Bernie Sanders, I think he's really a socialist. I think he really believes all that claptrap, but at least he's sincere. Let me ask this then. Is she a sociopath or a full-blown psychopath? Uh, I'm not a psychiatrist, so I couldn't tell you, but either one is a real possibility. Well, I'll tell you, I think so. she's a psychopath because she in, she's not just a sociopath. She enjoys hurting people and brags about it and licks her lips and looks like... Hey, I May I add something to that, Alex? Yes. One of the other, one of the definitions of uh, psychopathy and sociopathy, which is kind of more of what she is, though it's hard to to differentiate, is they don't have an appreciation for consequence. And a lot of times, what a sociopath will do and a psychopath is they will lie and get themselves into trouble. Not because mendacity is their middle name, is that where you and I might not lie because we will get caught. Hillary Clinton lives in a world that has its own rules. She can do whatever she wants. And not only that, she gets out of every. Think about this. Bill Clinton and Hillary, they have never been caught at anything 
in their that's life. That's right, and so that's they why never, they have incredible hubris, and it just sounds like World War III to put her in the presidency, because she just thinks she's invincible, and she's got all these minions that are just hopping around. Roger, sir, let me ask you this question. What do you make of all the Charlie Rose and Grubers and, and uh, you know, the uh, outgoing head of the State Department spokesperson? There's all these videos now where they go on TV and laugh and talk about how they're deceiving us and thank God we're so dumb. What the hell is that? Yeah, they're, this is, as your friend Carl Rove used to say, they're creating their own reality. So Trump did fine in the debate, so we will create our own reality. It was an ignominious defeat by Trump. No, it wasn't. He scored on jobs. He scored on taxes. He let a couple pitches go by, but it was only the first debate. We have two more debates to go. So uh, you have here the media seeking to recast the results the way they want them to be as opposed to the way they are. Do you agree with me, though, that the fact that they so over-rigged it uh, and, 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 and the fact that he was debating two people, I mean, I think that's really why Trump won. Yeah, I, I, look, I think that's true. I, I also um, have been watching this entire discussion where Hillary's aides say that she passed out on 9-11. She's had these fainting spells because she doesn't drink enough water, and they laugh. You try telling Hillary Clinton to drink water. Well, of course, uh, one of the uh, one of the, uh, the side effects of Parkinson's uh, is incontinence. Uh, so I think the reason she doesn't drink water is because she most likely, um, you know, has a, a bag strap to her her leg. Now, when you look at photos, there's very clearly something. No, that's why she's there. wearing the big, that's why it'll be like 80 degrees and she's wearing huge outfits because the woman's wearing a diaper. Yeah, she look, she has serious health problems. She's concealing them from the public. Isn't it interesting that Bill said that she, that all her doctors, doctors say she's fine, yet the only doctor we know that she's seen is this quack in Mount Kisco. Well, Well, first he said, oh yeah, she falls down all the time. You know, it's 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 no big deal. I mean, I mean, it's going on for a long time, but very rarely. I mean, he's of course. Yeah, actually, we said uh, you're right, and, and then, that's why an ambulance that, follows right behind her, and that's why the Secret Service said, "Look, just watch the ambulances, watch the vehicle. Watch, she's falling down. You're going to catch it on tape." And look, we caught it on tape. Well, and, and CBS, uh, God bless them, they edit Bill's comment that she fates all the time out of the interview because they're they're in on the joke. Uh, in 40 years in American politics, nine presidential campaigns, I've never seen this kind of bias. I agree. What does that signify kind of that they are destroying themselves with a wall of lies? Every major channel would show her wobble. They said she stumbled. Big deal. She didn't fall. They tried that for two days until they figured out, oh, my God, it's all over the Internet. Again, I would figure that in two seconds. Plus, I don't want to be deceptive. The most valuable thing is people knowing you're telling the truth. That's the most valuable commodity. People know they can trust you, that your word is your bond. That's my most valuable thing. But they don't even get that. But, but if I was in their mind, exactly what Lionel was just saying, I want to ask you this, Roger, and then have Lionel come back. If I was them, they're not even smart enough at CNN and all the major channels at first, Fox wasn't even showing it all. To only show her wobble and then not completely fall down and say we made it up? I mean, what the hell were they thinking? And then, of course, two days later, they then had to actually start showing it, Roger. That shows these people are stupid. Well, except for they're counting on their friends at Facebook uh, and their friends uh, at Twitter and their friends uh, in the even in the cyber media, making sure that as few people as possible see the truth. You see, they they that's why they censor. So how do we counter that? How do we counter Facebook, Google, Twitter, Apple? Microsoft all admitting they are, quote, going to deliver the election. Now the U.N. came out, I have this in the Associated Press, came out and said, Americans, we must bring down Trump. People worldwide stop him. Meanwhile, a branch of the U.N. slash E.U. is being brought in to oversee the election. You can't even make this up, Roger. No, and as I've said on this program, watch the watchers. Uh, we're about at stopthesteal.org. We are about to unveil our national exit pay, uh, our national exit poll software, so that we can double check this election, and we will know definitively whether this election has been stolen. Uh, it, it, this is this is a lot of uh, bells and whistles have gone into the technology, working with political scientists and working with other IT specialists. Uh, we're going to be able to see 
graphically whether they are cheating. We also have now finally come up with a program called Defend the Donalds. You can go to stopthesteal.org and click on that link uh, because we have to combat the paid bots being run by by uh, David Brock, the money launderer. Uh, oh, by the way, since you raised that, I want to have you up very, very soon. I know that you're taking care of some family today, hardworking guy, but we come back with a battle plan of what we can do, how we're going to take action. Because, I mean, as I keep saying, my audience is super informed. They want marching orders. They want me to tell them what they should do. And I just say spread the word, get out and tell people what's happening, buy the Clinton rape shirt, you know, call on the talk radio, call on the C-SPAN, get a bullhorn, go find a national news feed in your area, uh, you know, get on TV legally and lawfully, get aggressive, uh, you know, put Infowars.com on the side of your barn, uh, show support for Donald Trump, break through the political correctness. I want to talk about that with you in a moment, Roger, but first, Lionel, you, you're over there chomping at the bit. Well, you know, one of the re reasons why I think the message has been so effective, and let me just reiterate, I'm not an advocate or a surrogate for Donald Trump, but one of the reasons why I think his his performance and his poll numbers are far greater and more acceptable than anybody would ever imagine is by virtue of the frequency and the severity and the fer ferocity of the anti-Trump messaging. Because the Hillary Clinton group, her acolytes and minions and zealots and zombies are panic beyond anything that we can comprehend what they're trying to do is to hope that they can keep injecting more non sequiturs more non issues into the mix about his taxes about comments that he made now think about this as we look at the possibility of a third world war we are talking about nato and others sticking a thumb in the eye of putin and god knows what a mega power and instead of talking about that I'm talking about policy and platform. We're talking about comments that the Republican candidate made regarding a pageant entrant. Now, think about that for just a moment. This has been their goal. Keep this. That sounds idiotic. like the intro to a science fiction movie. You know, right. as the country debated uh, beauty pageants, nuclear right. war was about to happen and the human we're, species was about to end. Of, but we're rearranging the, you know, the, 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 the deck chairs on the Titanic. So what happens is this. But I submit to you that the numbers are far greater. Fact, let also, me bring that up to Roger. Because every time I bring this up to him in private or in public, he doesn't want to count on it. Never really, This is one of the few things Roger Stone never gives me an answer on. And, Roger, I want the answer because I respect you. Uh, getting to know you over the last year plus. I mean, you're so on target. You're the opposite of a liar. The opposite of what the media says you are. Let me ask you this. I know there's a huge shadow Trump support base. Most people I talk to, including a lot of Hispanic folks, secretly like Trump. They call and they tell us. I, people I know say it. Black folks have been intimidated, told not to. They get intimidated. You name it. Young people especially. Th there is this bullying. I think there is this big 5, 10, 15 point, I don't know, segment of closeted uh, Trump supporters out there. And so I think that Hillary is not going to win. She just has to, and I know this in my gut. She knows she has to convince everybody that it's plausible that she does win because they're going to steal it. They're master criminals. They've always done it. I believe they're preparing us to try to steal the election. Now, I want to keep saying we're in the race. We're winning to keep confidence up. That's the truth. But we have to admit that there's this fraud going on to stop it. And, and, and so what about the phantom Trump uh, vote out there? Well, turnout is going to be one of the uncertain things in this election. We know from studying poll results that Trump has consistently done better in polls that are automated than those that are conducted by a live operator. That This used to be known as the Bradley phenomena. You were people who did not want to tell a pollster that they were going to vote for former police commissioner. Sure. So what's uh, that Tom number? Bradley, what's the number? What's the number? American for mayor of Los Angeles. So I do think there's an under vote there. On the other hand, they're prepared to steal votes in the cities. They will engage in both voter fraud and election rigging. Why? Because they can. That's why. Uh, and that's why we have um, gone to great lengths to set up StopTheSteal.org to conduct exit polls so that we can compare to the actual results on a precinct by precinct basis and also to demand publicly that the software for these computerized voter machines be inspected by a neutral third party in the swing states 
prior to uh, election day, prior to the, the machines being turned All right, Roger, off. I know you probably got to go, but do five more minutes with us to finish up and talk about how we're going to stop the steal. And obviously, I think you agree, Trump is really ahead here, but they're going to try to print perception he isn't to also swing voters. So it's all a perception game. Will the truth override the lies? Lionel, five more with us as well. Stay with us. You know what we're doing? What we have to do. I was just talking to Roger in the break. Only a few minutes left with both these men. And thank them both for being on with us. Roger Stone of the StoneColdTruth.com, Lionel of LionelMedia.com. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com. I said, "What? What's going to stop Trump?" And he said, "Fear. There's massive intimidation. Uh, there's massive threats. I, in fact, there was a whole stack of news I was going to cover with them. Is is just the threats, the intimidation, the the bullying. Uh, but I think we're going to come through this and win. Uh, but Trump needs to do what got him here, and that's be aggressive." Uh, Stone, uh, you have launched a new site where we can counter the David Brock, the paid bloggers, the bots. This is an info war. Rally the troops. What do we do? Yeah, I think this is absolutely key. We need we need patriotic Americans to jump in and help us here. Over 500 people have already signed up, and we've just launched this. All we're asking you to do is to get daily uh, reports from us with the truth, information, not disinformation, but information, and go yes, out sir. on the blogosphere and post it. Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. Get the word out there uh, and reach as many people as you can. Uh, defend the Donald. You go to stopthesteal.org. At the very top of the page, you'll see a link for Defend the Donald. Sign up to join the blogging army of truth tellers. Uh, we, we're not looking for bots. We're not looking for paid uh, operative, uh, you know, operators out of India. We're looking for red-blooded Americans uh, with flesh and blood to sign up and join this blogging army. Absolutely, and we're going to take a lot of this, and people sign up for our free newsletter, Infowars.com forward slash newsletter. The same thing. It's an info war, folks. Lionel, final question or comment uh, for uh, our guest here, Mr. Stone. Well, uh, Roger, I was curious about what is your take as to the latest attack where anybody who now speaks or refers to or gets to know or discusses Julian Assange is now, according to Jerry Nadler, subject to FBI investigation? Yeah, that, that's, I, I, that, that's a witch hunt. This is the new McCarthyism. Uh, you know, Jerry Nadler uh, hack politician from Manhattan uh, is demanding that the FBI director investigate me for what? For having a mutual friend with Julian Assange? The FBI ought to be investigating his fat ass for working with the Clinton crime family. <laughs> they really ought to in investigate him, but it's an abuse of power. Uh, it's the new McCarthyism. It's completely irresponsible, and it's entirely partisan. I mean, all the top Democrats on August 31st in the House co-signed a letter to the FBI director uh, demanding that I be investigated. This is laughable. Be investigated for what? Expressing my Except Hillary right? says she's going to shut down the alt media and, and, and dark-hearted demons as but soon as she... Lionel? No, I'm sorry, but, but, but this is a direct affront against the First Amendment. You know, uh, uh, we, we have a mutual friend, Roger, who is speaking with Mr. Assange. I guess, um, I guess Oliver Stone should be investigated as well. But also, I mentioned to Alex before, there's a new ruling by the FEC, which seeks to invalidate or disenable any media organization that has a smidgen, a de minimis of foreign ownership from not only reporting on elections, but even commenting. And that would include Fox News. Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. Yeah, no, they're Times. trying to bring back the fairness doctrine. I mean, it's all happening, Roger. Yeah, no, look, I, I invited a reporter I have huge respect for at the New York Times to uh, join my radio show this uh, weekend. He said, sure, absolutely, I'd love to, but I have to get approval from the higher-ups. It's, it's standard. I said, no problem. He called me back this morning, kind of sheepish, and said, well, bad news. They, they nixed it. Uh, that's just pathetic. I mean, it, but it's part and parcel of... of oh, they're the always about ending communication. They're always the White House that runs Media Matters. is always about this person shouldn't go on Alex's show and that person shouldn't. Yeah, they want to control... Burning. It's book burning. It's, it's, it's Hitler-like censorship. Stalin would be proud. What it, can I say? It's here. Roger, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much. Great to be here. All right, I'm going to be back with a little bit more Lionel than hand the baton to our own David Knight. I got a bunch of news I haven't hit yet, so I might just co-host the whole third hour. I'm getting wound up. We have created a new deplorables meme. Of course, I'm in the original one. Very, very honored to be there with Pepe the Frog and Donald Trump and others. The Trump sons. Glad they retweet that out. But we made one yesterday where I had some of the reporters that were here standing in a V behind me. It was actually it was Buckley's idea. 
somebody's idea around here. Uh, and then I thought, wait a minute, Paul Watson's not in this. And we probably have some of our other reporters and people in it. Uh, but, th but there's too many, I guess. So we put it out. Well, there is a new one out uh, that we'll put on screen for TV viewers. And I'm going to tweet this out in a moment at Real Alex Jones. Please retweet it to everyone you know. It has a good chance of going viral. Uh, again, there's a new one we made today. And it was put in the computer about two hours ago. And I want to show it. And that is the new one where we have Pepe the Frog. And we also have Paul Joseph Watson. And if you guys need any help, go get Buckley. He'll send it to you again. Because I want to get this on screen. There you go. So the deplorables, there's a war on for your mind. Now, again, this looks silly. This looks funny. But this is where much of the war uh, is being fought. And that's why Homeland Security, the Southern Poverty Law Center, and the ADL last week officially did what Queen Hillary said. And they listed him as a white supremacist image. Now, you have to ask, why do we then use it? Because it's not a white supremacist image. It was always a, a, an image of trolling, having fun, uh, meaning something really was a big victory. That's what it means. It has nothing to do. Can you go to a white supremacist website? Three years after Pepe the Frog arrived, I went and investigated it. A white supremacist site posted it. Oh, my gosh. If a white supremacist ever has an American flag, I can't have one either. We're taking the images back, and we're not going to be politically correct. I mean, let me tell you something. There's funny things about every group of people. And if I see the classic Asian driver that's never driven a car and got their license blocking a highway entrance ramp, I think I'm going to shoot video of it and make fun of it. My sister's Asian adopted. I love Asians. But it's funny. That stereotype's funny. It's not racist. And if they want to get things so politically correct now where you're not supposed to use the word mother or father or kids say, I want brownies for dessert. They ask this class, what's your favorite dessert? The kid said, I like brownies. They sent them to the principal. They said, brownie could hurt a black person's feeling because they could be called a brownie. Oh, don't use brown paper bags in Seattle government. And, and people said, has there ever been a history of brown paper bag being associated with, with, with racism? Well, no, but if you just say we're going to brown paper bag it. I mean, I can tell you how many times I've years ago made my own lunch before I came to work. And, so, and I get to work, somebody says, hey, we're getting lunch. You want some? And I go, no. I brought my lunch, or I brown paper bagged it. Again, they just want to get you so off balance where you can't use any words or do anything you want or make a joke. And it's not right, ladies and gentlemen. And as Paul Watson's new video that came out today states, why is it okay to make fun of white people? Or why is Urkel acting like, you know, a classical white nerd racist? It's not. It's funny. So that's what this comes down to. We need to be able to laugh and make jokes and be silly, and again, have humor. This is an assault on civilization. I want to get to the intimidation with you and David Knight, who's going to be riding a shotgun with us for the rest of the segment. I know you got to go, Lionel, of LionelMedia.com. You know, as a constitutional lawyer, as a former prosecutor, am I right on this political correctness? I mean, what in the world is going on here? Because it's getting crazier and crazier now, where they say, we don't want images of masculine men on the walls. You know, that might intimidate someone who isn't big and masculine. Big and masculine at a university hurts women's feelings or, you know, no, I mean, I'm not kidding. Or don't have a gorilla. No, I know you're not. And that's the sad part about this. You, you know, Alex, there's a couple of things there. There's a wonderful, uh, there's a wonderful it's, it's, it's a terrible doctrine called learned helplessness. And it's a part of the PTSD uh, uh, phenomenon. It's also part of the, uh, the abuse spouse phenomenon. What happens is when you tell a country and a culture and you habituate them over and over and over, that they don't know what's right, there's nothing funny, be careful, watch what you say. That's one thing, that's one little vector. Another one is, this is a race, uh, Alex, that has nothing really to do with, with Hillary or Trump. This is about the efficacy and the legitimacy and the validity of the mainstream media. Let me tell you what's gonna happen. When the election's over, you're gonna see boardrooms, you're gonna see execs being called in to ask ABC, NBC, CNN, all of the others, to justify their existence, if they can't get Hillary elected with a full court press going 24-7 in creating... You're right, because they're not there to serve the country and have good news and promote a good free society. Precisely. They're there to keep the elite in power. And so the elite are going to say, look, you already almost have no viewers, but together we're supposed to be able to sell a hoax. Why do we even keep the facade up and the lights on Precisely. if you people can't keep the crime Precisely. boss in? Another thing, too, is I want people to understand this, that when it comes to ideology, look, there's a lot of things 
you may not uh, like this, but there's a lot of stuff that Bernie Sanders said that I like. Bernie Sanders was legitimate, whether you like him or not. Sure, story. big mega banks are screwing what, us, big corporations are tax exempt. Well, what I tell people is that Hillary Clinton is a Potemkin village. She's a facade. She is either a stalking horse, a sheepdog, whatever you want to call it. She will tell you whatever you want. Hillary Clinton is playing the role of the presumed leftist, a uh, liberal, uh, progressive, whatever you want to call oh, it. Oh, she's the real right-wing corporatist fascist. Hillary Clinton is a Wall Street shill and a warmonger of the first stripe. Everything about Hillary, oh, no. and I'm saying this again, is motivated, Alex, by pure craven, venal, naked, grass. And let me raise corrupted. this, because what you said is pure genius and absolutely on target. I want to ask you this, and then I'm going to ask David Knight this, because this is really what keeps me up at night. Clearly, if they've gone for broke, if they've committed all these crimes, sold out our secrets, stolen you know 90 plus percent of the money from little kids in Haiti you know, who are dying in mass, how far will they go and what do you think Hillary will do if she does get in? Because here's the deal. They're going to go ahead and steal the election. I'm pretty sure of it now because I was thinking about it. They have nothing to lose but to lose. All the crimes they've committed, all the things they've done, the unraveling of the system, uh, the mainstream media is collapsing. It right. wants censorship. It wants authoritarianism. It wants a managed economy. Their takeover under the old system has failed. Everything they've got is riding on this now. The globalists have said that in every major publication they've got from The Economist, The Washington Post, The Financial Times, The New York Times. They're all in. They're all committed. They've all had the boardroom meetings down even mid-level folks. I've talked to them saying, we've got to bring this in. We're taking over. A lot of even low-level liberals have now gotten on a power trip of like, we're going to arrest people. Yeah, we're going to beat the crap. We're going to kill people. And they're like really fired up and want to have a bloodthirsty uh, takeover, which is going to, they're going to be fighting the patriots, most of the military, the real killers. I really feel sorry for all these candy asses that now want to play dictator. And, and, I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm going to be in the middle of it, but I'm telling you, folks, civil war for sure, and not the one George Soros wanted. Now, now, line of line ranting, go ahead. No, no. Well, a couple of things here is I want to see this this kind of boardroom one day. You know, there's a wonderful scene from Patty Chayefsky's uh, network when, of course, when um, Ned Beatty speaks to Peter Finch and says, you have tampered with the laws of nature. And you I, will atone, Mr. Beale. you atone, Mr. Beale. I imagine something similar to this, where Mrs. Clinton, you told us you were one of us. We bought in. Do you think we gave all this money to the Clinton Foundation because we give a damn about Haiti? You didn't tell us you were sick. You didn't tell us this. We thought you were in. How come this, this latter day Donald Trump is cleaning your clock? You owe a lot of people a lot of money. Now, how do you explain that? Because what this does, remember, the media has its at stake. But, but Alex, globalism and the power structure that exists, because remember what Hillary Clinton is. Oh, they say globalism is dead if she falls. This is, this is so epic. 38 days. I'm on the edge of my seat. I, 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 uh. The reconfiguration of this. And, and remember, I have not even got, let, let me just say one thing in favor of Donald Trump, because I haven't said one thing pro or con. The thing that he said that won my heart, because Alex, the number one issue for me is world war. My God, have we forgotten Vietnam? You know, we're such a great country. We talk about, oh, the troops. We talk about Colin Kaepernick. We couldn't but even beat the, the Vietnamese because of the corruption. We're not gonna beat the Russians. We're gonna kill everybody. But we talk about this, this love of flair. You know, I believe there's always an inverse proportionality to somebody's uh, uh, knowledge of history and the size of their American flag lapel pin. We talked about Colin Kaepernick taking a knee because we're a country that believes in the flag. Well, let me tell you something. This country is not about the flag. It's about the Constitution. And it's not about the NFL. And we've got somebody right now who systematically could subjugate the Constitution. And number two, could reintroduce more men and women into fighting for wars that we can't Assange fathom. Assange openly said, she, she's going to put all our necks in the news, she's a demon. And then Clinton came out and said, she does work like a demon. And so undoubtedly, here, here's what's happening, folks. I don't want to say our military, and even large parts of the actual operators. I don't mean operator like a special forces soldier. I mean, I mean real technicians, real propagandists, people that have done a lot of bad stuff. They're not even perfect. They're not even really good guys, a lot of them. But they don't want to end prosperity. They don't want to see the country collapse. And they understand, like the last year of World War II, Hitler had lost. He wouldn't give up. He wouldn't sue for peace. 
And so he was going to bring Germany down. The Germans had only lost like 10 million people at that time. They, so, so they lost 10 million in four years. They lost another 12 million in the next year. And so I'm telling you, the globalist system's coming down. And the military, the CIA, and everybody now realizes it's a failed system. It was always a lie. And so what I'm telling you is they're trying to soft landing the country with Donald Trump. I mean, I can Alex, tell you right now, also Hillary is going to crash land the damn plane. People, you cannot. This woman collapsing is emblematic of their system. Right. Go ahead. Go but ahead. Alex, but Alex, there is something that Donald Trump is not going to brook. And that is simply this. If and when he ever were to take the, the Oval Office, nobody can hand him a script and say, now, Mr. President, what we're going to do is, as you know, since the end of World War One, we've been scripting basically the path of this country in 15 to 25 year increments and our next theater of war is going to be africa we've already got africa I'm no, that's right Jibouti. he's going to upset the large plan that's set in motion that's criminal exactly and because if they go to donald trump and they say listen you, you do realize that the currency of war right now is water through hydrology and hydro imperialism that's what libya was all about number two is about it's about rare earth metals it's about lithium it's about a lot of other things and we have also concocted this myth of the next a terroristic group that we've already central casting has these guys already standing and, by. And, and let me add the coup de gras to this. Here's the, let me add the coup de gras. Our own elites have figured out that are still for America. Some of them. We're supposed to fall in this in the next phase of the plan, and we're always to be set up and blamed. And that's why people are going. Wait, I thought we were setting up a world government to spread America and freedom and all this stuff. We don't do that. No. And this thing's actually anti-America and anti-free market. You know what? We're going to steal the plan from you and actually use it for 1776 worldwide, my plan and others' plan, to actually take this thing back and then democratize these countries and push back from the table and then actually be more powerful than ever. You know, Alex, there was a time in this country, and I remember Vietnam, where McNamara said we had this crazy idea that we were basically stopping this domino effect and we were stopping this, this, this metastatic cancer called communism. They didn't want the oil in Vietnam. They didn't want the lithium and the rare earth metals, and they, they, they didn't want the, the uh, geostrategic. They wanted the war game. They wanted the, uh, there was an ideology, and, and their, their, if you will, bellicose despotism at least was based in part upon perhaps a misplaced, but an ideology. Today it is simply this. It is about the, it is about the ruling class. It is about the globalist elite, banksters. and. You know, I, I slightly disagree with you. I think there was an ideology with the generals and, and, the, and the American people that was actually a dialectic to cause a societal breakdown and then to give the new left all this so-called cred into the future and the war was actually about centralization of power uh and was actually about weapons profiteering well listen there was always let's let's go back to the military industrial complex but the point i'm saying is simply this what we're talking about right now is a very simple idea i said before what donald trump said that i couldn't believe he was saying this they said would you speak with mr putin and he said yes and they said how dare you do you know let me just say something this russophobic red scare business you know recently Larry King, who does a show on Aura TV, which is on the RT network, he interviewed Donald Trump. And overnight, they came Donald over Trump's on Russian TV. Right, but, uh, but, but suggesting that, that Larry King is some kind of a Russian agent or some Kremlinologist, when Larry King, by next week, will have interviewed everybody on the face of the earth. Now, Larry King, the following week, was interviewing Dolly Parton, and nobody talked about that. But what happens is you have this gullible, sheeple, this, this, this American public that believes everything because it's so tired and it's so narcotized. Lionel, Lionel, I've got to go to our next guest, but you're, you're on fire. But I've got to say this. You're absolutely right. You know how surreal it was? I got sad for my country, sad for Rachel Maddow, sad for Hillary, really, that they're so low. And I don't mean that to sound big. I mean, it's a feeling beyond hatred or disgust or loathing now when they had me and Donald Trump and Putin up there, and she says, we're basically Russian agents. Hillary says in her alt-media speech that, 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 that our godfather is Putin. That's a quote. And it's so insulting, not that they're even saying it about me, but that it's so patently ridiculous, it's so patently insane, uh, it's so patently false, and that they think the public would actually buy that. And this is what hit me, Lionel. And I want to ask David not about this, but I want to ask you briefly in closing. Oh, my God, they are planning on a war with Russia down the road. And anybody against that war is now going to be a Russian agent. And 
This is a globalist war against what's left of nation states, just like the UN and the communist Chinese and everybody else are weighing in to suppress America right now and are involved in our election. And the EU and UN is coming to run our election. This really is globalism. All these nations under global control ganging up and the UK and Russia are already pulling out. God bless them. We're trying to pull out. So I guess as a nationalist, you could then say, I guess we are allied with Russia and that we don't want them to be overrun you know, and we respect their country. But, I mean, that's just called being sane. You know, Alex, one of the best things you can do, there's a great psychological technique, and I don't know the name of it, but I'll just call it alignalism. And that is simply this. If you want to really confound somebody, if I want to really make you hum and a hum and a hum and pull a Ralph Cramden and look as guilty as hell, the best thing I can do is to accuse you of something that is so ridiculous you don't even know where to start. If I said you're a Venusian, you're a Martian, you're not even human versus you are a right wing zealot or despotic or whatever that you can deal with. When somebody hits you with not only being somehow an agent of a foreign country and part of an international uh, Russo Kremlin Moscow centric cabal and conspiracy conspiracy and confederation that is so far-fetched, so beyond imagination that it, it you're, you're nonplussed and you end up looking guilty because you don't even know where to start. It's so, it's so incredible. That's what they do. It's like people that have been falsely accused of rape and it later comes out that they didn't do it. When the police are questioning them and you're a prosecutor, they're just, some of they can't even talk. They're like, right. did I, ra what? It's you like, it's like, guilty. am I a Russian agent? It's like, because... This is, you know, the media is bad, but but Hillary's getting 35 million from the Russians for the uranium. She's 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 a real broker selling our country out. All this is really happening. Uh, and then she's she 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 went and spent a lot of time in Moscow in the 60s as a CIA agent. But the point is, I don't even been to Moscow, but you're absolutely but, right. It, it just but, but shows Alex, how they're trying to hit you with something so over the top. But also, let, let me tell you something. When we when, when you work in. And Rachel, I, I, I think she's, a, she's a, a delightful person. I worked with her years ago. Believe it or not, there was a group called Air America. And I've never met anybody who is nice, as nice as she is. She's a very smart person. But let me tell you what happens. When you are a part of a group, you become a member. And when you are making millions of dollars, and you are not only, you are making millions, but you're, elevated and provided a pedestal where you are the voice of a progressive group there's this 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 deification this apotheosis this lionization and you become part of group think rachel maddow and others not her per se but others become connected into this organic thinking machine where they are not only right but they're justified and they're pure and donald trump is evil sure, sure. and you can give them anything, and the more strident they become, the more they are praised, the more bonuses, the more money. And what happens is, let me just stop by. If you were to say, Rachel, I saw her interview where she absolutely castigated Hillary Clinton because, because she was basically a, a Bernie Sanders fan. If I said, Rachel, for $25,000 in a new car, please list in any order you want all of the reasons why Hillary Clinton will benefit the country and what particular platform or precept or, or future vision that you endorse and believe in, not that it's not going to uh, be a Trump or you're going to stifle a Trump uh, 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 election, but tell me what Hillary Clinton has promised you. Tell me about her plan. Exactly. Lionel, we're out of and, time. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh, thank great you, job sir. Uh, here with us today. We really appreciate you. Thank you, sir. I got to hand this over to David Nunn. He always just prepared for the show. Sometimes I run over, obviously. But uh, Lionel's on target, lionelmedia.com. I want to just say this in closing. Again, it doesn't hurt me that they, they say I'm a Russian agent. Okay, I mean, they actually say it. It's that they know it's not true. And they know that if this country had any type of IQ, that that would get them in a lot of trouble. But I think the country does have somewhat of an acumen. So then what does that say? I think they've gone crazy. I think what Lionel just said is right. They're all in there reinforcing themselves where Hitler, who was a pretty smart guy, a bad guy, but smart, actually believed that General Steiner and stuff was going to save him and beat the Russians and beat the United States and the Allies when there were armies 10 times the size of theirs re-equipped, closing in on Berlin. It wasn't till the last two days before they got into his bunker. They were 300 yards away. And he still thought he was going to win.
And I'm going to tell you, they call us the deplorables. They are the delusionals. They are, they are, they are. They may get Hillary in through fraud or some October surprise. Trump's not in yet. Looking at it, I think he's about five, ten points ahead, depending on how you look, break it. But make no mistake, they're done. Globalism is done, like Steve Pachanik said. And the more time goes on, I realize how smart that guy is. I'm going to get him on for a whole hour next week about de-evolution. De Power back to the locals, back to the states, um, you know, back to these political unions getting broken up. Not getting bigger, getting smaller is the answer. Uh, and... If we can save the country, I sure want to do it. But we don't have a country right now. We're a corporate colonial structure now. And if they put this seriously ill, crazy corrupt lady that steals silverware from the White House and plates. I, I mean, most people don't even know that. That's admitted. They had to get, I mean, these people are the lowest trash. They would come to your house, and this is known, because the Clintons will steal stuff out of your house, folks. It's like making Winona Ryder president. We'll be back with David Knight. This is not about talking about myself. This is not gonzo journalism. But I'm not purely engaged in journalism. I'm engaged in pretty much pure activism, using the truth as a weapon against the tyrants. I'm going to hand the baton to David Knight. Not only news is tonight, 7 o'clock Central. He's going to be hosting this Sunday. I think Roger Stone is going to come on, but specifically on a battle plan to really stop the steal. Not just get organized and be poll watchers, but how are they going to try to steal it? But everything's coming together. This is the planets aligning for good or for bad right now. And when you fight globalism, which is a modern form of corporate colonialism, in their own words, that's setting up a technocracy to control and enslave everybody, a planetary government based on rigged economies, unfair weights and balances, unfair justice, systems where only the globalists can basically operate. And then they have the nerve. When you're finally proven right, and it all comes out in the news, world government, corporate world government, you name it, they just go, we're just going to divide and conquer and use racism with the minorities and divide everybody. And uh, you're like, that's wrong. That's racist. Of course it's racist. And you realize, oh, my God, you're conscious sociopaths, even mid-level people now that work for the system. They know. I thought we'd wake everybody up and then we'd turn this around. Instead, it's like, oh, I might want to join that. Thanks for teaching me how it really worked. Now I can get a job in it. And you're like, oh, my gosh. This is a system meant to destroy prosperity and screw people over. What type of idiot would sign on to something like that? What the hell is your problem? But I, t I, I coined a term a few days ago, and I asked Nico to remind me what it was. It was, uh, what was the word, Nico? Oh, he may not be in the room anymore. He was just reminding me, like, during the break, going, hey, okay, delusionite, thank you. So I've got this idea. Somebody had the idea. We were doing a photo shoot. Buckley's like, we need to have a photo shoot with you and the reporters. And I was like, okay. And then somebody said, we should do it like the deplorables. And I said, okay, let's do that. And then I said, oh, no, Watson's not in it. So let's Photoshop him in. So there's a new one uh, out of that, that that we just tweeted out at Real Alex Jones. Please make it go viral. So it brings folks back to the show. It's, it's part of the info war. So we've added Pepe the Frog and Watson. People say, you know, that Pepe the Frog's fake. Yes, it's also racist. We understand. Hillary Clinton said so. There's not really a six-foot frog. We, we get it. But I thought, these people are the delusionals. This morning it hit me. So we're going to Photoshop. Anybody else can do this. See, I don't territorialize ideas. I just want to win and have freedom in this information war. But we can have the deplorables. Okay, but you are the delusionals. And you can form the new delusionite party. That's the new word I've invented, delusionite, where you just are in your own fantasy land and you're completely insane and you, and, and you just believe whatever mainstream media says. And then, hey, it doesn't matter if you're mainstream media and you have a 6% approval rating and everybody hates you. Just be delusional and say you're winning. And then maybe get enough of your delusionite followers to believe it. So when you do steal the election, the 60% or whatever that were robbed believe the con and buy into your delusionite system. Because what you're building is so inhuman, so garbage filled, so ass backwards, so upside down, so two plus two equals whatever Karl Rove or Barack Obama says, that we don't even have a hope 
of understanding it. And that is it. That's why they're dumbing the kids down. It's why they're scrambling the brains. It's why they're at war with mathematics and reality is because they are the delusionites. Hillary herself is a delusionite. How does she think she's going to keep going? She, she, it's probably a bigger victory if she does get in, the more I think about it, because it's so discrediting. You guys have destroyed your soft power. Now you're saying you're going to censor us and arrest us, and we're Russian spies. You're, you've lost. When you start calling people that are Americana, anti-globalist, total nationalist, Russian spies, and you call Nigel Farage a Russian spy, because 25 years ago, before this debate was even going, he didn't like the UK going under EU control with no voting. You've lost. You arrest me and say I'm a Russian spy plotting to assassinate Hillary. Yes, folks, they have a federal investigation going on that. Okay, I've confirmed it. You heard it right. I'm not a Russian spy. I'm not planning to assassinate Hillary. And then it all clicked. Oh, my gosh. It's what Watson said he smells. They're going to do a false flag. And they could do something so big and so delusional and so crazy where they could try to kill Hillary and say one of my listeners did it. Or hell, folks, say I did it. I mean, the sky's the limit. Why not? These are people that when they left the White House, stole the China. And I keep going back to that because it's the trashiness. It's the boldness. It's the psychopaths. Stop. Stop. They, they lose connection with reality. David, I know I'm on fire today, and people get mad at me. I'm going to explain. When we have fourth hour, it's always known that I may just go into the fourth hour. They're just there in the wings. If this pony gets tired, but David always gets ready and has a lot to cover, so that I still kind of feel bad. So it's uh, it's best of times, worst of times. But it's just all coming into view now, David. For me, I mean, is it coming into view for you, or do you do you see something different? Yeah, you know, Alex, when you were talking to Lionel and, and you asked him uh, what he saw coming up, I, I think we can already see how they're pushing for World War III. It was just on Wednesday that David Petraeus went on the Charlie Rose show saying it's not too late. We can still have a no-fly zone. And he made some amazing comments, Alex. Uh, he said uh, it's, it's not too late to declare a safe zone. It's not too late to declare a no-fly zone. He says you don't even have to enter their airspace. You could do it with cruise missiles, air-launched, sea-launched, other things. It's very, that very means blow very, up very, Russian very planes. And if, I'm sorry. Yeah. If, if, please cue up the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs last week. No coverage in the U.S. says, you're asking us to do a no-fly, that means war with Russia, I'm ready, but I need the order. And it's like, these people are so delusional, Obama and Hillary and, and, and the neocons won't even give the order. They're so disconnected, they bitch at the general, why is it they're a no-fly zone? It's because there'll be a goddamn war with Russia, you dumb bastards. And listen, I don't want to use the Lord's name in vain, I mean there'll be a God will damn us to hell and if we're about to have nuclear war, it's time to use the GD, folks, because the point is, is that's, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Dave, but you're so on target. You're so, I mean, I, you know, there was somebody in the past who I knew who thought I was a kook for warning of World War III when all the experts say it's getting closer. And I told that person, I said, you just need to get out of my life at this point because I don't want to be around people that don't care anymore. I'm sick of all you people that think not giving any, a crap gives you some type of moral superiority. What it makes you is a piece of filth. I'm sorry, David. Go ahead. I'm going to stop now. You take over. you got great points to make. Please support us, folks. Get our new probiotic. Get the Hillary for President shirt. We're going to stop selling it in 38 days. We need the financial support. Pray for us and spread our videos and articles. There's a lot of stuff on InfoWars that we didn't get to, but just, 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 just understand it's all happening. Everything's accelerating. The censorship, the control, all of it. David and I, go ahead. Well, yeah, Alex, it's absolutely is amazing, you know, when you were talking about that, what, what's going to happen. And clearly one of the things that they're telling us, before I get back to the war issue, I mean, World War Three is something we should be concerned about, folks. But even if they didn't do that, even if World War Three doesn't break out, they have a soft tyranny plan. And I keep seeing from all the mainstream media, like The Guardian, The New York Times, Washington Post, article after article after article saying there's one thing that Hillary and Trump both agree on. They don't want to see TPP. And every time I see that, I just want to slam my fist on the desk and say that is the that is the most blatant she lie is the they can tell you. Author. Absolutely. 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 And and if you get TPP, you have to understand what they're doing is they're setting this up to control our economies globally. Once they control our economies globally, they will run them into the ground, then they will use as an as an excuse to seize political control. And you have to look at Hillary Clinton. She is fully on board with TPP. It was the gold standard. And do your own fact checking. We the have put plan this is to run down our economies to yes. build their new breakaway civilization in their own words. They want you poor. They're building a breakaway system. Go ahead, David. 
Yeah, absolutely. Alex, th there are three different areas to this. We have to understand this. Open borders is part of it. The great people replacement, bringing chaos with culture clashes that are engineered. The other part of it is the trade treaties where your economy will be managed by unaccountable committees that are outside of your country. You have absolutely no control or authority over these people. We're dangerously close to that now with the private Federal Reserve even pulling in people like this Chobani Greek yogurt billionaire who's not even an American citizen on the New York Fed creating economic policy force. It's going to get much more detailed than that. Oh, it's here. It, it, again, yeah. it's the TPP UN taking over now. It's, it's all happening. So they've got to get this bolted down because they've got agreements. They're building a world government and we're supposedly not part of it. Uh, here's General Joseph Dunford, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, since you mentioned it. I want to back you up for new listeners. Saying, yeah, we can have no fly zone. It means war with Russia. And as you said, Charlie Rose, yes. they've got General Petraeus and they're going, we don't, it's okay, we'll just shoot down the Russian planes with cruise missiles, but then they're going to respond. I, this is the craziest stuff As I've ever As if they don't heard. have anything else. We've got the, all the cruise missiles, we've got all the sea launch missiles, we can just, we're, we're so... But what happens yeah. when Russia then responds to that, yes. which they will? That, that's yes. what I mean. They, they only talk about one move in a chess game. Yes. And they've got to know, it's like it's a demon from another planet trying to kill all of us, going, we can attack the Russians, and they don't <laughs> talk about what happens when you do. Yeah. I mean, it's the craziest crap. And then it's not like we're attacking the Russians to free some people. We're attacking the Russians so they can't defeat Al-Qaeda and yes. ISIS. And that's the key. That's the key. Why do we have to stop Russia from defeating ISIS? That's the most insane and see, Donald part Trump of it. has common sense and says, this is great. They're like, oh, my God, you're a Russian agent. You're not going to let our Saudi Arabian jihadis kill everyone and kill the Christians. You're so horrible, Trump. He's not a Russian agent. He's an agent of not wanting to commit suicide, delusionites, dumbasses. <laughs> and, and you know, Alex, when we look at this, I, I see this article from The Guardian. They talk about, well, there's a new offensive that is uh, shaping up again for the battle for Aleppo. And again, there was a massive battle What's four Aleppo? years ago. Aleppo. Yeah, what is Aleppo? Yeah, are you listening, Gary Johnson? Pay attention right now. There was a major battle when you were running for president four years ago. It is shaping up for another Can you name one battle. world leader? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, By yeah, the way, you, just yeah. a month ago, I told people that I thought he had a stroke or was brain damaged or was mentally ill, and CJ came on and seconded it. He was here for an hour, and he would sit there during the break scowling and growling at me, and like like a three-year-old that thinks you know he's in a Superman outfit that can beat you up, and I thought it was a joke. I believe Gary Johnson is completely insane. Yeah. And, and notice wow. it's now being illustrated. It's not just the fat guy who stripped down to his G-string. I mean, uh, Gary Johnson and William Mulder doing the full Monty every time they get on television, so they're not going to do any more town halls. But if we look at Aleppo, they've got a massive number of uh, Syrian troops and other fighters, 5,000, going in to try to take back that city now. And the way The Guardian reports it, they said uh, they're, going, they're, they're going to attack opposition-held Aleppo. They won't say that it's being held by ISIS. See, that's the way they spin it. The liberal papers, the mainstream media. I know, and when media. people get killed when the West started this invasion, oh my gosh, it was more deaths because of Assad. Yeah, yeah. And Donald Trump doesn't even want to get rid of him. No, Donald Trump says Assad should go. And Assad says, I'll leave as soon as you pull out and we'll have an election, but we're not going to be taken over by Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Well, they, they tried a, a ceasefire, uh, and that didn't last for even Putin a week. Putin has said they will support making Assad go. Yes. They will yes. stand by that. In fact, since you mentioned it, let me play the club. General Joseph Dunford saying, yeah, okay, we can have no flies on it means war with Russia. I need to get the authorization for that. Here it is. For Syria. What about the option of controlling the airspace so that, that barrel bombs cannot be dropped? All, all the options. Uh, what they, do you think of that option, sir? Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. That's a pretty fundamental decision that certainly I'm not going to make. But it's okay because the, the trendies at Media Matters, and I'm not against beards, but I've seen their TV shows, pink shirts, green socks, Nelly guys going, going, oh, I like my cat. Oh, I like my cat. Oh, uh, uh. Meanwhile, they're having articles calling for shutting down the free press and war with Russia. It's like, dude, just because you've got a beard and a pink shirt doesn't mean it's okay to have nuclear war, dumbass. And that's what I'm saying is, I think we're in the greatest danger ever because we've got a bunch of people. The warrior class has got its own problems, but at least they're usually the ones you got to worry about starting a war. They're the ones stopping our crazy, weirdo, criminal, sociopath liberals from starting World War III because even the State Department admits Hollywood's mad about the pro-family agenda of Russia and that it's Christian. So Hollywood's got such a raging hard-on for some Christians that they can't kill 
that, that, they, that they want to all die when ICBMs come into uh, Southern California. Yeah, you know, Alex, I, I see this. And what when I see these kind of remarks by David Petraeus, uh, that, that clip you just played there of one general trying to uh, drill some sense into the idiot, asking him, you know, well, we could do that, but that's going to be full-on war, sir. You might want to think about that. And yet you've got David Petraeus going full-on Dr. Strangelove, you know, jumping on the bomb and saying, let's go, you know. But, of course, he's not going to be the one doing it. He's going to send other people to do it. But that's essentially what we're seeing, Alex. It's absolute insanity. Anybody that is not a trigger-happy, war-mongering megalomaniac. Well, you can be trigger-happy if you're picking on Iraq or something. They don't have freaking nuclear weapons and subs off the coast with 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 uh, cruise missiles and then, and then they go well we've got three times the missiles the russians do yes our three times will destroy the planet hundreds of times <laughs> and the russians yeah. can only destroy the planet 100 times that's right what that's is right. it you don't get about it they can only destroy the planet 100 times we can only destroy it 300 times mad mutually assured destruction dumbass and you brought up iraq uh, that's the other city that everybody that gary johnson pay attention there's not only aleppo but Mosul, okay, there's a massive uh, battle that is shaping up in Mosul in Iraq, where Aleppo is in Syria, Gary. And they have already got over 4,000 American troops still in Iraq. They have added in the last couple of weeks, we keep hearing, well, another 500, then another 600 troops. And that's right, Gary. And, and Syria is on the border with Turkey that's <laughs> opened the border to Europe. So that's an Islamic invasion route. They call it migrants. And the U.N. is running a migrant jihad, 80% military age male invasion. How crazy is that? Then we get the George Soros email. It's a takeover. We have the battle plan. It's a trap. Yeah. It's a trap. Yes. And the other part of the trap, of course, is the open borders. They go to these areas, they incite the people that are there by uh, massive collateral damage, not only creating a war, not only creating, you know, going to war against these people, but also shipping in ISIS fighters, arming and training them at the same time, being their air force, shutting down the Syrian counterattack against ISIS. That happened during the ceasefire. They used, the American forces used the ceasefire to, to decimate the Syrian counterstrike against ISIS and to leave a major city open no, it's, it's, for it's ISIS. It's like the Tet Offensive. You've got yeah. a two-day period where there's not supposed to be any, you know, war. It's a ceasefire, and then we total re resupply. And, you know, we got Hillary Clinton saying, no more ground troops in Iraq. We're not ever going to have ground troops in Iraq. They are putting them in 500 one week, 600 another week. By the way, I've got to be honest, advisors. interrupting you. I'm going to leave and let you take the final segment. I can't believe the Russians even went along with NATO and let them do a ceasefire Putin and them should say, you have no honor, you don't do anything you say or do, we're not, you know, we're not leaving. But I know they want to just come in, get out, they don't have the money to be doing all this, he doesn't want to bankrupt Russia further. Uh, it's just, uh, it's so evil, I mean, it's like when Putin said, and it's the truth, I'm not lionizing him, he told the truth, and he said, do you know what you've done, turning loose these jihadis, killing all these Christians and people, hundreds of thousands dead? Do you know what your what what your leaders have done? I mean, we literally have crazy people that are bloodthirsty running things, David. It's absolutely insane, Alex. And yet we've seen just this. Uh, I think this was Wednesday that we saw an American official saying, "Well, you know, the the Russians might be getting a wave of terrorist attacks." We saw that illusion a That's couple Kirby. of months ago. Yeah, that we saw illusion a couple of months ago from a uh, former CIA official saying, "Well, you know, we have to come after Putin. We have to strike close to him. We don't have to assassinate him, but get close to him." And you look at that film of that car that does a head-on that kills his favorite chauffeur. I mean, that guy had to drift it to get over to the left to hit that guy uh, do a head-on collision. That's what they're doing. They're threatening it. They're nothing but mafia. Yeah, and then people start striking back. Uh, yeah. It's pure bullying, and, and the chutzpah of the globalists is disgusting. David Knight, take over. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Friday, September 30th, 2016. I want to quickly run down some of the headlines that tell you where we're going to be headed if Hillary Clinton becomes president, or some of the dangers that are on the horizon. We were just talking about what's going on in Syria, what's going on in Iraq. Uh, that area has been set on fire, as we point out many times, by Hillary Clinton, by Obama, beginning in Libya. And they tried to say that uh, Donald Trump was not opposed to this. And, of course, Lionel was pointing out, even though he said uh, he's, he's not a big fan of Donald Trump, he really doesn't like Hillary. And he says, look, one of the things I like about Donald Trump is the fact that he's not for war. And he was not for the Iraq war. They tried to take an ambivalent statement that he made on the Howard Stern show 
and turn that into a vote for Iraq. No, it was Hillary Clinton that voted for Iraq as a senator, somebody who should have looked at the details of this, made an informed, uh, serious decision. Instead, of uh, they tried to uh, parlay that with an offhand comment that he made. But we have an article from Kit Daniels, uh, media fact checker infighting erupts over Trump's Iraq, Iraq stance. You know, you got the Hill, you got PolitiFact, they can't decide what's true, what's not true. It's the same way it is with the polls. Even with the temperatures, uh, as they try to push global warming, we say they can't even agree on the temperatures the day that Hillary collapses from overheating. But as uh, Kit points out, you've got Lester Holt uh, pushing back Trump. You know, the other person that he was debating in the uh, in the debate on Monday night says, uh, no, the record shows uh, you uh, didn't oppose the war. But in reality, if you go back, that statement was on two, in 2002, January 2003, an interview of Fox News. Trump said, well, perhaps Bush shouldn't be doing it yet. Perhaps we should be waiting for the U.N. And they said uh, even not even a week after the invasion began, Trump said this war is a mess. And that was at a time when the war support and the U.S. was hovering at 72 percent. He was going against the grain of public opinion. And he also points out Trump also spoke against the war in August 2004 interview with Esquire. Snopes says, oh, by then it was not a particularly controversial stand to take. That's not true. As they point out in the article, the uh, controversial protest by uh, Cindy Sheehan against the war at Bush's ranch didn't happen for even another year. So he is on record. If you want to actually do the fact checking yourself, take a look at uh, the article by Kit Daniels. But when we look at what is coming up. Look at the fact that we have the Senate bill this week. The Senate bill is coming out saying we're going to mandate TSA involvement with ground transportation. Say so it's the transportation administration. It's not airlines, okay? It's going to be every bit of our transportation. We've got Obama's education secretary concerned about homeschooling. We've got the Obama UN Internet takeover just hours away. And by the way, I don't think this is going to be some kind of a Y2K scenario that we need to worry about. You know, everybody was talking about, well, when it flips over the year 2000, everything's just going to go down instantly. And this isn't going to happen in this case either. Uh, if, if I'm wrong, you won't hear us on Sunday, okay? But <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. It's a soft tyranny. It's a gradual tyranny. That's the most dangerous kind, folks. That's what you really have to be concerned about. And then this interesting article uh, that came out a couple of days ago, record number of guns seized in London over the last year. Interesting, isn't it? I thought they had gun control. They have a total gun ban, especially in London. Why is this happening? They say, well, officers have seized more than 700 guns as the number of weapons smuggled into the country continues to grow. See, it's not even the guns. It's the terrorists that they're bringing in. They go into these areas. They incite a war. Then they invite the people to come into the country. Now, Sunday, I want to talk to you about some of the things that we didn't get to today. I want to talk about a uh, lawsuit about Muslims in the factories. And, uh, you know, what would Henry Ford do uh, if the Muslims shut down the assembly line with multiple prayer breaks? You will not believe what is happening at the few places that we still have factories. When they bring in the Muslims, they don't give the jobs to Americans. They give them to the Muslims like they do in Motown, making it Mohammed Town. That's it for today's news. Join us tonight, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, for the InfoWars Nightly News.